Good morning, Insomnia. Wipe the sleep from your eyes. It is Championship Sunday, and this is the Emerge Dota 2 Open. And we have a bit of a story for you here today. The top two teams that are seeded in this tournament have made their way to the final. We're expecting a good event that's going to be going, hopefully, the distance. We have two great teams to showcase to you here, and we have a couple of short videos to show you before the games actually get underway. So. Before we do anything else, starting over here to my right, coming from the winner's bracket with a one-game advantage in the best of five that we have in the finals. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Seems Good. Uh, I think we'd reasonably be able to expect to win. I think we're all just relatively relaxed, except for me. I'm just trying to play a role I don't usually play, so I'm just trying not to mess up. We almost played a scrim last week, and that was worrying, so we didn't get any practice in, so that's good. So I'd say we're fairly happy with what we prepared. In terms of like strategy and cohesion, not so much, but individually we're quite well prepared, yeah. Uh, it's been reasonably comfortable. Groups, we didn't drop a game. We've only dropped one game the entire tournament. Maybe try to focus on winning lanes more, or maybe moving together ourselves, something like that. But just being prepared for it, I think we'd know what's going, going to happen this time around. I think regardless of who it is, we're going to win, I think. I think we're pretty comfortable that we're going to win. Um, yeah, we've done pretty well coming through, and yeah, we just want to win, really. And facing off against them, coming from the lower bracket, sat here to my left-hand side, their challenges, starting a game down, but hopefully making it back to level pegging as quickly as possible. This is Xenex Gaming. They're definitely tough opponents. Uh, Beast is a pretty strong carry. Um, we, know, we know them pretty well by now, played them many times before. Um, I think it's going to be, they're going to definitely be tough games, but we definitely have it in us to win the games. Yeah, I definitely think we have a chance, but they're not going to let us just take it, you know? I feel like we have it. We, we, can, we can definitely take it. And to take you through this fantastic set of finals where, of course, we have delicious swag and prize money on the line for whichever team happens to make it to three first, we have some fantastic commentators lined up to talk you through what these players are likely to be doing. Don't forget, they all know each other, they practice together, and today is going to be absolutely no different in terms of the close match competition that we've seen them show us over the last couple of months. So over to you guys. We have Zumbrella, we have Fodal, and we have Robin Roll on the caster's desks. Take it away, gents. Thank you very much down there, and welcome to the Emerge Dota 2 Cup here at Insomnia 56, and I am excited. I'm Zambrella, to my left is the fantastic Robin Roll, and to my far left is the very knowledgeable Faudel, and he even knows a bit about Dota as well. Only a little bit, though. <laughs> only a little bit, yeah. Um, two teams I'm really familiar with. Uh, I think we all kind of expected this to be the grand final. Um, you know, Xenex have a long way around coming from the lower bracket, uh, going out in the upper bracket semi to Paris Ruin, but we're back here today in the grand final, um, and I can't wait. Okay, we've had some, yeah, like I said, we've had some great matches. In fact, it was a bit of an upset with Xenex being knocked down to the lower bracket finals. Mm. Um, but they came through, uh, came through from perilous gaming. I can actually say that today for some reason. Um, so yeah, <laughs> maybe some technical issues here, but it was uh, a very long run for Xenex. Well, longer than they might have expected. Yeah, I think they were playing all of yesterday. Yeah, pretty pretty much all of yesterday. You know, dropping down in the, uh, the semi-finals to the lower bracket. So they had they had a good number of games, and my Dota keeps crashing. So, uh, <laughs> Reborn, to, all right. Uh, yeah, remake, but is this? Uh... Oh, that's already running. Uh, Reborn. So is, is we actually yeah. getting a remake or? So, do you want to go into predictions? Do you want to? I don't know, I think we need a little bit more story coming from our UK. A little bit resident. more story, well, expert. You know, there's, where do I begin with these two teams? So, you know, everyone playing today has been around for, been around for years. Um, you know, you've got sort of last event, Welp now playing for Seems Good, used to play for Xenex, uh, 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 Insomnia 55, now playing for Seems Good. You've got, uh, you know, former teammate of Mute with Rhyme as well. Um, Visa, Rhyme, Mute, and Welp all used to play on the same team. They used to be the dominant force in. Uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, of course, uh, previous winners of, uh, of I-Series as well. So, 
Yeah, I mean, where to begin? You've got um, sort of Meep, who uh, a lot of people think uh, sort of was brought into the scene by Kundral on opposite teams in the mid matchup. Um, so that's sort of the, uh, the Jedi versus the Padder one almost. I can't wait. Can't wait to see what's going to happen there. So, yeah, a lot of, uh, you know, there's a lot of prize money at stake here, but I think as much as anything, it's, uh, it's ego and pride on the line as well. Yeah, I must say, I actually want to give a shout out to um, Perilous Ruin. They did a really good, they came mm. third place. Definitely, uh, yeah. Xenix. I was feeling a little Yeah, made, made, things, made things interesting yesterday. Uh, taking the game off seems good as well, actually, in uh, it's a dominant fashion. I but think that was the only game that seems good dropped in the upper bracket final. Yeah, the only, that's the only yep. game seems good dropped uh, through the whole tournament. Right, just going to uh, find this lobby, <laughs> technical issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. I am back in. Okay, so we'll be going into a game. Uh, um, game shortly, guys. But uh, so, you know, obviously I know these two teams very well. What's impressed you about sort of each team in particular through this one? Obviously, not knowing a lot about the teams, seeing them uh, sort of come through this bracket. I think personally, it's just the way that they've, they've decided that yeah, okay, we can play. The other, the other set strategy, you know, but they're not afraid to change. Like we saw that with the Abaddon pickup when there was the Bat Rider. Uh, I, I think that was against Euphrac. Uh, wow, ga wow, game. wow, gaming. Wow, gaming. Yeah, that was uh, seemed good. Yeah. And the Brewmaster pickup as well. That worked pretty well. Mm -hmm. So, like I say, they're not afraid to change it up. They, yeah. they know, but they definitely have that game plan. And I think we have everyone in the lobby. Just uh, need everyone to confirm that we're ready to go, but. I'm actually, yeah, like going back to that question, I'm really looking forward to, I think both teams can execute some really, really good team fights. I'm expecting like, you know, Magnus is mm. coupled up with a, with a Sven or like an Ember or something, has some super cleave, Rampages, uh, must. In fact, the first day we saw like three Rapier picks up in yeah, two games. Yeah, in fact, that, that brings back to the point. We, we've not seen a Lampage yet. So the Rampage on land, the Lampage. I don't think there might have been one in the tournament, but we've not, certainly not casted one, so. Uh Fingers crossed, we'll get, uh, we'll get our first uh, first rampage on the uh, in the grand final. Yeah, um, and again, again, mentioning that Sven Beza has been absolutely dominant on that Sven. I think uh, the first match we cast, he got something mm -hmm. like 138 CS in 15 minutes, and he was just absolutely bombing that lane. Yeah, a complete monster on the air, which makes it look makes it look completely overpowered. To be honest, I yep. mean, uh, you know, seems to get a really good at uh, securing their safe lane, making sure Beza gets that farm, and that's. That's why we saw them struggle a bit when, when Perilous sort of uh, came to their safe lane and tried to sort of uh, pressure shape things up a bit, but uh, they recovered. Ready, I think players ready to go, so if players ready to go. Oh, you I'm, could do the honors. You are the lovely host. So, uh, Hooray, we're going to be going in. Hopefully everything will run smoothly this time. In this, uh, so like it was said earlier, they're going to be, uh, seems good, they're going to have a game one advantage considering they went through the upper bracket, only losing one game the entire tournament so far. Entire tournament so far, and yeah. So, um, if that doesn't make them the bookies' favourite, I don't know. What yeah, will. I, I don't know what it is. I mean, but another thing to point out, you know, um, seems good. They had that two-one victory over uh, Perilous Ruin. Third game looked very convincing, but second game, you know, they were behind a lot of the time. They came back. Um, whereas Zenix Gaming, you know, they they dropped two-zero um, after the second game goes for 85 minutes <laughs> in the winner bracket semis, um, and then they come back to 2-0 to Perilous Gaming in the lower bracket final. So maybe they're going to be you know, filled with confidence from that 2-0, um, you know, a really convincing performance rather than maybe seems good uh, have a little bit of nerves after sort of the 2-1. First game obviously getting dominated quite hard. The second game looked a bit shaky, but they um, managed to pull through with the Ancient Apparition pick against the Daniel yeah, Pascal, oh, yeah. sort of that, that, that sort of hard counter. And uh, So yeah, I think uh, you know, as well, you, you've got a lot of experience on this uh, on both of these teams, um, I think most of these players have played on main stages before. I think, I think I'm right in saying the only player who hasn't played on the main stage before is Meep for Xenex. Okay. I think everyone else has played on a main stage at, uh, at an iSeries event. Yeah. So, uh, shall we get into this draft then? Yes. Get this first, well, second game, I guess, pseudo first game, underway. And I think we actually, we seem to be reverting back to sort of more a stable, you know, mm. the standard bands coming out yeah. in the first phase. Nothing. Crazy. Yeah, game one, I think uh, they're going to feed each other out. You know, the Shadow Fiend band from Seems Good. Um, both teams can play that hero very well. A couple of, I think there's about four or five Shadow Fiend players in this game. So that's going to get banned out. They're going to ban out the Doom as well. Pseudo's uh, you know, proven time again. He's, he's very com uh, confident on Doom. And it's a really good hero. 
Xenix Gaming, going to go for uh, banning out the Dazzle, which uh, we've seen Cook play a lot. Seems good, really like to run it. Um, helps secure the safe lane for Beastler. You know, Shallow Grave's a great tool to help you from trouble. And we're going to ban out the Tusk as well, because uh, she's a really good hero. And uh, yeah, on Xenix Gaming, Winter Wyvern straight away. We've seen them pick it up yep. all throughout the tournament. Really confident on it. Uh, uh, it seems good. They go with a one two punch, the Dark Seer, Queen of Pain combo. And already, uh, we were talking mm. about how we wanted team fight, how we were expecting lots of team fight, and these three heroes already showing huge team fight potential and prevalence across the en entire like spectrum of the game. So, do you think the first uh, game draft is going to be it's going to be standard picks, standard bans, or do you think we because we did see something like, we saw the Vengeful Spirit carry mm. yesterday it didn't work out too well. We have seen the Brewmaster being picked mm. up. We've seen the Tiny run it in that roaming. Uh, support kind of role. So, but are we just going to see standard bounce, standard draft? Uh, I, I think for the most part, yeah. First game we're going to see very standard. You know, it's very early in the morning. These teams haven't had time to warm up. Um, we just got up. So, uh, yeah. Saying that, I mean, Xenex go for the Invoker. I uh, think me yep, love yep. to play this hero. I was so, about to say, uh, that's a pretty standard pickup for them, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, I don't think we've, we've seen it at all this tournament. I think banned. this has been a first uh, phase uh, ban every we, single time Xenex have been we, played. We did see it uh, in the very first game we casted on Friday, actually, going all the way back to uh, Xenex versus Euphrag. Meat played the Invoker and, uh, yeah, dominated with the, with the hero, got, uh, got a solo kill 1v2, and came back and got the, uh, the double kill solo in, in the mid lane up against, up against Euphrag. So, yeah, when he has when he has had a chance to play the hero, uh, when it hasn't been banned out against him, he has um, he has shown he's, he's strong in it. So yeah, we're gonna pick him out. All right, we see a disruptor ban coming out from seems good, pretty standard against like a dark seer queen of pain. More team fight. Is next they go with the spirit breaker and that uh, huskar ban? I think that's uh, fair enough. We've yeah. seen how strong it can be this tournament. Yeah, the the spirit breaker as we you know we keep going back to this perilous perilous ruin team, but we uh, we saw three games from him yesterday. Both teams in the end decided, right, we don't want to deal with their Spirit Breaker. You know, we, we had Meep on yesterday after the game say, right, you know, we figured out what we want to do. We figured out what's causing us problems. It's the Spirit Breaker pick. So first ban against Paris Ruin, Spirit Breaker. So I think both of these teams don't want to play the style of Dota that Spirit Breaker uh, you know, comes to. I think because of the Invoker pick, uh, probably going up against the Queen of Pain middle, the, the Spirit Breaker is going to benefit the uh, Seems Good more, ganking the, the Invoker as opposed to the Queen of Pain. Obviously, has a blink. Yeah, Xenix ban now, as well as Huskar, and uh, Gyrocrops are banned from... Yeah, this is, this is typical 6.8, yeah. 6.85 now, waiting for that 6.86. Yeah. Coming out in probably the next few days. Anyway, moving on. Bane for Seems Good. This seems to be, like, this, I'd love to see the pick, the pick rate of this here. It must mm. be above 80% at the moment. Yeah, yeah, and Xenix, another hero there, very confident on, the Juggernaut. Ah, uh, you get the Sven. Sven. Yeah. yeah. We, so, uh, you're in for a treat, guys, mm. you're in for a treat. You know, we've seen Beast play with Sven a lot of this tournament and be completely dominant, um, have loads of farm. It's, uh, it's really good up against the Juggernaut, actually. I know that uh, seems good we're saying that yesterday. They do really like up against the Juggernaut, obviously. The Sven, uh, the Sven Warcry yeah. is going to give you 20 bonus armor for 8 seconds. And uh, Beast does max that by sort of level, level 10, level 12, keeping only um, on the maxes yeah. of Cleave first. Keep, keeps one in the Storm Hammer. Maybe he takes another point if he's getting contested, but he, normally he likes to max out the Cleave in the Warcry. So. That bonus armor up against the uh, Juggernaut is going to be really good, and you talk, talked about Magnus. Yeah, I mean, I, I love Magnus. He's such a good hero. He's probably going to be in the off lane, can be played in the mid lane, but I'm, I'm thinking about how do they deal with the Sven, but you it looks like they're going to match it firepower with firepower, give that Juggernaut the cleave. Mm. And okay, so you've got extra 20 armor, but when I'm cleaving, in fact, he could just not even target the Sven and mm. hit one of the weaker supports or whatever, and the cleave doesn't, uh, it doesn't get blocked by armor. Yeah, yeah like, we yeah. have seen the Juggernaut go for the Battle Fury build, mm. so the bonus cleave on top of the Battle Fury cleave yeah. is just going to be absolutely killer. Yeah, yeah and it's also, uh, you know, really good synergy with the Winter Wyvern and with the Invoker. Um, obviously, you know, you, you group everyone up anyway, then that Winter's Curse drops, uh, and, you know, that, that sets up for the Invoker to drop the, uh, the Sunstrike, Meteor, Tornado, Deafening Blast, and all, all that good stuff. And, well, yeah, if you, you know, get a, up with a juggernaut cleave as well. Yeah, so, if you uh, get a three or four man Winter's Curse, you can drop the EMP yep. over that, and then the Sven's not going to be able to do anything. Mm -hmm. doesn't have the biggest mana pool. Yep. Dark Seer, uh, really, he's going to be able to have to pick his spells. Bane, he's not really going to get the Nightmare off, the Enfeeble off, and then, you know, choose to go for the Fiend's Grip, I think. Whereas on the other side, for Seems Good, um, they can pick up the Dark Seer. Obviously, there's a synergy there with the, uh, the Vacuum into the Stormhammer. You know, little, almost, little, almost like a, yeah. a, a, sort of a suedo RP there between the two heroes. Um, it's a harder to pull off. It's a lot harder to pull off, though. It is a lot harder to pull off, but um, 
He's I'll, the be best. About, I'll be lying if I say they, they don't have the talent to do it. So, um, yeah, you know, obviously I've played with these players a lot. They, uh, they definitely have a talent to pull that off. So uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's something I wanted to note about the Winter Wyvern that I think I really want to look at this Winter Wyvern and how he uses his ultimate. I'd love to see him use it on like the Queen of Pain or the Bane. Mm. And when the Sven is in God's strength, as long as he doesn't have BKB on, yeah. he, he's going to kill his own team. Mm. Easy. Yeah, we actually, we actually saw that uh, yesterday, par again, the Paris Green Games against Xenex. Um, 80 minutes, um, he actually goes playing the Winter Wyvern, throws out the Winter's Curse, um, it gets Lotus Orbed, turns back on himself, and Meep sort of kills him in, in three hits. And I lost okay. it, I'm dying. Right, I'm dying. Um, I know that they think this hero is really, really strong. We haven't seen it picked up first, so, uh, you know, Maybe Xenex aren't, aren't really expecting uh, an Undying pick here. We haven't seen Seems Good play it that much, but I, I do know that they do value it very highly yeah. in this patch. They, they think it's a really good hero. Yeah, like, like we've talked before, Juggernaut is okay against the Undying, mm. though, in terms of getting rid of that Tombstone. And yeah. it's got the, sp the spin against Sven is kind of is very good as well, because obviously the Stormbolt has got a, a long yeah, fast time. But on, uh, on the flip side of that, suddenly, you know, if you start, if you go into the Blade Fury, you're still there for five seconds. And, but Sven doesn't really care, you know, he's yeah. going gonna to pop a God's strength, he's going to have a load of farm, and he's just going to start whacking you, and there's, you know, you, you, can't, turn, you can't, can't turn against him, you can't get out of a healing ward, you can't get off your Omni Slash to sort of stop that damage, so, yeah, seems good, do really like the Sven, Sven matchup up against the Juggernaut, so I, they're, they're going to be happy with uh, how this job. I, I think I know what Xenex is going to go. I think the Lich. You think the Lich is, okay. One, it combos very well, and I think if you can run a dual off lane with the Magnus mm. Lich, this is, gonna tr this is actually going to upset the Sven a lot. And I think this is what they need to do against Seems Good. They yeah, we have, we have seen them yeah. play the Lich. Um, I, think, I, think it, I think it would work out really well. Oh, we got to Right. So Rasta, um, going to provide a lot of good Disable against, uh, up against the Queen of Pain, up against the Dark Seer, you know, up against the Sven as well. Um, we have seen it banned out a lot, actually, against, against Xenex. You know, teams really, uh, really don't want to play up against it, especially if it's in this um, you know, 3v1 scenario in the safe lane. Yeah. You know, you can mine up the shackles with the uh, the winter wyvern damage and uh, blade fury on, onto the darks here, and uh, yeah, yeah. Darks Re really good here up against the darks here. And this gives them a bit of push as well. You throw in the uh, invoker mm. with uh, those forge spirits, and they've got some pretty decent push already. And yeah, so get to we're gonna we're gonna jump into the game, and uh, so, yeah. I think this is Xenix are uh, gonna be looking towards harassing Pisa on that safe lane and just trying to shut that lane down. Or do you think they're gonna play their own game? They've got something in the bag. I think, well, they, they're only sending a Magnus. Magnus is not going to get mm. too much out of the lane and not going to do much in terms of harass. But anyway, this is game number one. Seems good going up against Xenix, seed one and two. This should be a very exciting game as we do have a pause. Yeah, but this will give us right. some time to, uh, <laughs> to at least introduce the players and what they'll be playing. So over on the Radiant side, Xenix. We've got Ichigo playing this Shadow Shaman. Mute242 playing the Winter Wyvern. Water playing the Juggernaut. Meep on the mid Invoker. And finally, We've got Tsudle on the Magnus. And uh, you want to just run through who's on the dire side? Being a, you, you, okay, I'll, I'll keep the camera here and you, you can do it for us, uh, Rob. Yeah, Kundal's going to be playing on the Queen of Pain. We've got Welp on the Bane. We've got Colin playing on the Undyne. Uh, that's Cook, isn't it? I think. Uh, yeah, Cook, yeah. 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 Ryan going to be playing, playing up the Darks here. And we've got Beezer on the Sven. So pretty standard stuff yeah. coming out. So this, this one game advantage is, is fairly significant in this best of five series, but mm. I'm hoping it doesn't play too much of a big role because I'm hoping for four games at least. Well, no, yeah, this we're is, only going to get four games. But. This can definitely go a distance. Um, obviously, you know, teams going to looking for that quick 2-0 victory um, to, give it, to give them the win. They want to they get this over done with. They want a dominant performance. Um, but uh, yeah, Xenex can definitely pull out the, uh, the three games. In fact, in, um, in more more recent uh, finals here. We have seen the, the lower bracket team actually win a couple of times. Um, back in back in Sprint, Zenex will remember, they were in the grand final up against um, up against Druids. Uh, and Druids took the uh, took the three games from uh, from 2-0 behind to win that. So um, yeah, it's cer certainly possible to, uh, to make the comeback. You know, it's not the end of the world if you're, if you're about one game behind. It's uh, four games of Dota, and we've we've seen across best of threes how, uh, how things have changed already. So. Uh, yeah, so pretty standard picks coming out for now, but a, a very exciting game underway, I think. These four heroes from the Rainier side, they are going to move through their own jungle. Whereas, it, is this going to be a movement of five heroes coming out from Seems Good, it looks like? I'm um, going to try and invade the Radiant jungle. They're going to, Radiant going to be man down, but this does mean Magnus can get this ward wherever he wants, uncontested, even the extra vision when needed. 
And uh, it looks like pretty standard movement coming out. We see this an awful lot. Mm. The Dyer trying to block up the Radiant stacks if possible. Whether they're going to find anything, Welp is going to see uh, Meep. He does have that Nightmare ready. He's going to use it. In fact, the Winter's Curse does come out and he takes it away from him. Really good use there of that Arctic Burn. Not Winter's Curse, but the Storm Hammer. This is going to be Mew 242 sacrificing his life. Tombstone even committed here. Mew 242, couple more right clicks coming in. It's going to be first blood to Kundral. That's going to give him an advantage, but where, who took the Bounty Rune in the end? It's not even spawned no, yet. Oh, he's still going. Nice. Uh, I won't throw it out the. Uh... <laughs> Good luck, have fun. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the BM. The BM comes out. Oh, well, so it's going to be Queen of Pain getting first blood and the Bounty Rune already up to 300 gold plus. So that must be a salve coming her way as well. Uh, Magnus, a little lucky for himself. Is he going to look for a skewer here? Oh, no, we got another. Maybe going to have another pause come out as hotkeys. This is what happens when you switch computers. Mm. Not everything's saved. And Bane is going to su support this Queen of Pain in the mid lane. So Invoker, even with this high base damage, going Exhort. Well, it's not actually that high at the moment, but once he gets a couple of levels, but in comes the Winter Wyvern. So we've seen this many times. Uh, in your mind, who, who wins this matchup, Queen of Pain, Invoker? Well, normally I'd say, you know, we're pretty even, but with that first blood and the Bounty Rune going to Kundral, he's going to definitely have the advantage. Oh, meanwhile, Rhyme in some trouble. One more right click is not going to come in. Darkseer left on 15 oh, hit points. Let's see if, let's see if Meep can get that level two. If, uh, it looks like, looks like I'm going to give up that 100 HP threshold before I get to the, uh, the sun strike up, so he's going to be just fine. Yeah, and I'm assuming that this Darkseid lane is going to be a lot harder than usual with the shackles coming out. Well, meanwhile, Shu yeah. gets a solo kill up top against Cook. He must have skewered him right back underneath the tower. Nice plays. That is, yeah. That's a really big deal for him now really up to level deal. two and a half. You know, we, we talked about how it seems good like to secure that safe lane. Win their safe lane very hard. Secure the farm for Beasts. So uh, anything Sudo can get like that here, so for a freebie is going to be going to be crucial for uh, for Xenex. Yeah, so already some action. <laughs> Not even two minutes in, and we've got two kills. But the, sh the Shadow Shaman proving pesky for the Darks here. Mm. Yeah, I mean we haven't even we haven't even seen the, uh, the combo with the, the Sunstrike come out yet. So um, yeah, obviously we saw the Darks here live on uh, about 20 HP. Obviously, if there's a Sunstrike there, combo up with the Shackles that time. He's just dead. So um, we're gonna we're gonna see that come up now. I think from uh, from Meep. He chooses to go for yeah. There we go. Instantly, instantly evoke the Sunstrike. So uh, yeah, we're gonna have that to, to work with. I think Exhort build is, is pretty good this game actually. I think they need the extra bit of damage because Juggernaut on his own isn't. Uh, it's it's risky. In fact, it looks like uh, the Sven was actually skewed all the way back. It takes a lot of damage. Mm. Gonna be forced to use that salve up. Sudol getting two very good skewers, proving to be. Uh, Good start for him. Yeah, he's having he's having a good time up top so far. Um, he's going to send out his his bottle actually, so he's going to walk top and secure that two minute rune. That's a bottle before you actually invoke it. Doesn't probably get a bottle anyway, but mm. all the uh, mids get theirs. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, having the uh, having the invoker, we're probably not going to see the invoker go for the bottle this game. Not not usually a bottle hero. So uh, yeah, two can pick a couple of bottle. He's going to uh, you know run to the top rune every two minutes, see if he can secure that away from. Uh, Away from Kendall. At the same time, it's going to be, uh, you know, Mewtwo for two's job on this Winter Wyvern to secure the bottom rune. As we see him deward the uh, the medium camp, uh, and this means they're just they're just going to get some uh, some pull through from, uh, you know, from their easy camp. Yeah, just like that, and uh, that's going to help him out. And as I go on to rhyme here, he gets a surge off. You're going to get away. Yeah, Ichigo can't quite catch up to him, although he's still running forward. No boots on either hero. Yeah, with that surge, Darkseer is going to secure himself away. And I think until the Shadow Shaman does get his boots up, that Darkseer, unless he overextends, he's not really going to be in a whole lot of trouble. Yeah, and this is why we sometimes see the, uh, the Shadow Shaman's opt to go for those boots at level 1. Just give him an extra move speed, because uh, he's one of the slower heroes in the game at 285 move speed. So. Yeah. I guess they were thinking the Arctic Burn would be enough to Yeah, they, they were hoping they could just, you know, have Ishida run out of the fog, catch him off guard, and he's going to try again here, but I'm just going to surge away. Yeah, and I think he's that's what he needs in. to do. A anytime that Shadow Shaman goes missing, he's actually going to get close to him, but not close enough for the shackles. He's going to throw out some, uh, some harassment. And uh, one thing to note is they're going to be looking at how much damage the uh, full level of Exhort Meep has. Currently, it's uh, only level one, obviously, for that electricity build. Which is pretty standard for, uh, for Exhort Invokers nowadays. But yeah, it takes a second point into Exhort. And uh, you know, at level three, this is where this uh, Sunstrike starts to become. Uh, 
Evidently, but yeah, I mean, if uh, maybe if the Zudle can get a, a nice skewer back again, it can he help doing, get him get going aggressive on Kundal, but he just misses the Sunstrike and uh, Kundal's gonna be fine. Doesn't actually have any regen. He's gonna have to go all the way back to base now. I think no levels in uh, that boss for the regen. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna start firing at Zal. Uh, yeah. Welp's gonna secure top secure top battering, so. In mid, we are going to see Kundal actually dominating that lane quite hard with the uh, the advantage he got from the first blood and from the, the bounty room. So um, yeah, he's going 17-12 uh, up against Meep 7 and 5. So uh, yeah, I'm I think that's just the advantage from the bounty room and the uh, and the first blood he got just uh, really paying off there. So the dark set maybe not getting as many last hits as you would like, but you can see the juggernaut is struggling compared to Beast's fan. Ten last hits already, and this is four and a half minutes here. 10 minutes, uh, 10 last hits behind. And something to note, the Magnus is level 5 up on that top yeah. lane, uh, Foreman, so he's not having the worst lane. Welp is coming in, is it going to be a nightmare? Looking to get the skewer. Uh, they don't, they, he's too far behind, they couldn't get him with the nightmare. Yeah. Meanwhile, in mid, uh, Kundra hits level 6, throws out a Sonic Wave, gets a kill on Meat, but he's able to TP away from, uh, TP away from Mute on, on one hit. So, uh, yeah, Solo will go in the way of Kundra there with the Sonic Wave. Nice place, that's, yeah, that's important. Yeah, it is. Obviously, he's just. Uh, He's had a, a level of advantage. Obviously, oh, the, the wow. first with the battery is going to make a big difference there, but... That's a really big difference. Queen of Peace level 6, well, must have just hit level 6 compared to Invoker level 4.5, and, and this is why we see the mids generally tend to get those early early runes, but actually, down on the bottom lane now, Tombstone is dropped, and we see an Ion Shelled uh, in Undying with Boots. He's just going to run everyone down. That's, the, that's actually the Juggernaut going to go down, and now Ichigo in a lot of trouble here. He throws out the Hex. It's not going to make much of a difference. Uses those sticks, trying to keep himself alive. Not going to happen, and could this be three kills? Mute 242 fortunately has the Arctic Burn, so he can fly over the trees. But we're going to see uh, pretty much, uh, yeah, so a two for nil trade-off there. A good rotation coming in from Undying, helping out Rhyme there. Rhyme having the presence of mind to put an Iron Shell as he was running away onto that Undying, who is, with the boots, very scary. 910 hit points now. There's no way you're bringing him down. And we're showing the, the power of the, uh, the Darks here, here, not only limiting Juggernaut's farm, but also hel helping get some kills. Oh, I'll skew back to the Sven, but he's just going to start with Sisulay, and I think Sisulay is going to be absolutely fine. And the Sven is as well. Yeah, so, uh, seems you're putting ahead early here with their, uh, with their lanes. Almost kind of to be expected, I think we do have the stronger lanes with the, um, with the Undying, with the Darkseer in, uh, in the bottom lane, and obviously the Queen of Pain getting the, getting the battery rune, and that first blood is, is going to... She has a good time in the middle. Oh. She's going to come in the middle. Yeah, he gets the Hex, and then the Shackles will come out now, but he's going to throw out the combo. It should be enough to bring down Kundal, and I really, that was a good smoke. He, uh, he, I think he'd have to smoke there, otherwise he probably would have been revealed. Mm. Um, and Nighttime as well, hiding behind the yeah. trees. Great movement there from the Yeah, spawn. really good rotation from... Uh, from Ishigo, good poses from Meek. He throws out the um, throws out a Cold Snap as soon as Ishigo walks into Vision. Stops the uh, a quick blink away from Kundra, and then you know, Ishigo can get in range, throw out the Hex, throw out the Shackles, and uh, yeah, this early point in Wept means you can throw out the Meteor rather than just sort of a Sunstrike, and uh, does do a lot of damage for the Meteor, even at, even at low levels. But yeah, really, really important kill for uh, for Meat Bear. Yeah. So, yeah, like you said, I think we'll see. We'll see Juggernaut go for that Battle Fury after. He might go some other items first. And Rhyme could be in some trouble here on the bottom lane. He throws out the wall onto Ichigo. Now he's just going to Iron Shell himself up to try and run after Ichigo. Ichigo in some trouble here, actually. Rhyme gets the kill. Is he going to be able to get himself away? He's just charging after water here. But we're going to see a TP out from U242. So Dark's here on his own, picking up that early point in, uh, in the wall. And gets a kill when I thought he was going to be dead. Yeah, usually you don't see the Darkseers go for the wall until about level 8, level 9 uh, because of the mana issues that we do have, but Ryan picking that up really early and I think that was just a surprise there coming out for the Shadow Shaman. Oh, the only Slash comes out though, Water just about gets in range. <laughs> Gonna get hit down by his own creep. Actually, I love the positioning of this wall as well. He's gonna, he's gonna get crit by his own illusion. Because it's, it's through here, so if they wanted to chase him, they'd have to run through it a few times. He's yeah. Meanwhile at top, as soon as you pick up the Arcane Boots, yeah, I'm going to smoke with Fishigo coming up here he's, as well. He's got 29 last hits for the offlaner. That's, yeah, he's that's done, the same as the Darks really well. here. He, uh, he's going to have that RP up. 
Yeah. yeah, but with the smoke, he just walks straight up to Beza. Beza backs himself away as soon as that pops, and he had the Bane there in the background, just in case anything happens to throw out that Nightmare as well. So I'm not sure what that smoke was actually used the, for. The smoke was uh, was just for Ishigo. He just happened to uh, <laughs> happened to give him the... Uh, Sudo was buying the Mana Boots, so he, uh, he gets the Mana Boots from, from Sudo, and he, he smokes himself and looks for a kill on mid, but... Uh, Fortunately, for seems good. The Queen of Pain's uh, going to be elsewhere. He's actually, you know, you know, use the Invis rune and go bottom. But uh, yeah, Watson's Ward's wise for this. He's in, he's in the woods himself. So uh, yeah, a couple of rotations, not really anything coming from it. But uh, yeah, I'd like to see some rotations up to the top lane to try and help Sud lay out. Because I think with, with an RP, plus maybe the Invoker and a couple of others. Although down here in the bottom lane, Kundral, he has a Sonic Wave. If he wants to throw it out, he just wants to... Battle up for now, the spin was just doing too much damage. Max level as well, so 155 damage a second is uh, a force to be reckoned with. Green Mile in the jungle, Ryan goes to shackled up there, and that's a very good Ether shot coming in. The heals up onto the Undyne, plus the Cold Embrace trying to keep it to go for life. Well, comes in, but that's a double Sonic Wave. Kundral with the plays, getting himself a double kill, and now Meep running himself away. Not too much move speed, actually, and well, gonna up no mana for now he does have that clarity if need be is he going to try and deny himself to these uh, neutrals he is he's just stalling it out for now but the brain sap just uh, just came up there 130 mana needed <laughs> uh, he tried the deny to ancients so a three for one trade-off favoring seems good there yeah and uh, meanwhile i just want to point something out you know the max number of last hits you get all the all the lane creeps at 10 minutes is uh, 82. 10 minutes hit this has 85 creeps at 10 minutes, farming up his hard camp as well on Sven. <laughs> so, you know, he's, while all is going on the map, Beast is just content to farm away, and he's, uh, you know, more than double the, uh, the last hits of that juggernaut, so yeah, he's having a great time up the top. I'm sure that's the power of the cleave, because at yeah. 6 minutes in, he was only on 43 last hits, so he has started to find those last hits in the jungle, and yeah. this is something that teams got to keep doing, and teams keep letting them get away with it, so you're going to be looking at it again. 15 minutes in, another 150 last hits, and a really, really big spend really early on. Ooh, we already got the Ancient stack coming up from that, uh, that Helm of a Dominator. Oh, jeez. And he's going to stack it again here. This is some scary stuff coming out for Beast's Sven. In fact, he's gonna, he, can't, he, can, he can probably take it actually with the God Strength. A ward does get put down by the Winter Wyvern. They know this is going on. They probably should rotate to try and contest this, but pressure is being applied elsewhere on the map, I think, so gonna make it hard. Cold Strength being used, plus the uh, Warcry. It's gonna bring his armor up and his damage, and he should take this fairly simply, although Ichigo, plus Meep and Mute getting into position. Only level five on the Winter Wyvern, although Shadow Shaman does have those wards, and it might be worth putting down, but the TP support is coming in, and they're not, they're not gonna get there in time. Maybe get some experience from it, but, you know, I think I think the gold's more, a lot more important, bringing Sven up to 1500. Gonna get that BKB on very early and Rhyme in the bottom lane. Oh, very low once again. The oh, sun strike. The strike. Uh, oh, nice. Finds the sun strike. Really good kill there. Good work there from me. Yeah, yeah so me. Couple hundred gold from his uh, from his Midas. Does have a phase boots. Now we're gonna. We're actually gonna group up the uh, the Shadow Shape and um, Mass Effect wards are up. So uh, this is their cue to sort of group up. We get the pick up on the darks here. The mech isn't up yet. So this is where we're going to group up, throw down the rest of wards, and uh, yeah, start to, start to take the steel on bottom tower. Yeah, I think this is exactly what they need to do. Whether the die will contest this, yeah, it doesn't look like it's right. going to be a TP of the darks into the top lane. It's just going to accept the fate of this tower. Not, I mean, it's quite a nice tower to have because it's by Roshan, mm. but the one behind it is also uh, you know pretty close. So it doesn't matter too much. Yeah, it is, it is sort of uh, one of the more important tier one towers in the game. Obviously, yeah. Uh, like you say, it's close to that Roshan, and they, they do have heroes who can utilize sort of uh, blink daggers and uh, the Queen of Pain blink to do stuff from this high ground. You know, they don't have to come in from the, uh, from the low ground or the river, so. I, I've seen um, the Sven do this quite a lot, where he, he war cries the creep wave, which makes it really hard to last hit, and it pushes the creep wave towards the tower, so it gets some damage in there as well. It's, it's, it's these little things mm. can make a big difference overall, but I also want to just look at Tsudele, right? He's up at 1,700 gold. He's going to have his Blink Dagger in, like, what would be a pretty decent mid Magnus timing. Yeah, he's had, he's had a good time having this top lane, you know. Something about Shockwave, they don't really have the tools to kill him when he has that, uh, that skewer up. The uh, Undying not going to provide much against him. Obviously, the Undying has rotated and found stuff elsewhere, but just for Bane and the Sven aren't really do, doing too much for him. At the same time, Sudo can't really pressure Beast too much, as we see. Beast has got 132 last hits at, uh... Ah, oh, the Fiend's grip in the mid lane, though. Invoker, gonna get a... 
uh, it's Fiend Script and uh, it goes down just the right click. It's not even any magic damage coming out from the Queen of Pain. Didn't have the mana at the point. No, just needed to right click and down. The Fiend Script was uh, just doing enough damage. Um, going back to the Magnus, do you think that's a way that the Xanax are playing? Because they have this the Winter Wyvern in the mid lane. That means the Bane then has to come and protect the, the Queen of Pain. That which yeah. opens the lane up for Sudalay because there is no real lockdown. Okay, if you have anything to die in the can throw out the, the case, but there's no real lockdown, so he's always going to be able to screw himself away. Yeah, yeah definitely. And I think, um, I think you know, the next are waiting for this timing with the uh, Magnus Spink before they try and try and do too much. You know, we've seen a couple of smokes early on, but they have hit the Winter Wyvern level six. They have hit the, uh, the Blink Dagger nearly on. Uh, he actually, he's got it now on uh, on Sudal. So I think they do still have a smoke in their inventory. So. Uh, but yeah, they could look, just suddenly go explosive. Yeah, look, look for this to be where they maybe try and take it to Bisa, but Bisa's already going to have that, uh, that San Jinyasha up for uh, the 15 minute mark, so he's going to be very hard to take down. There's the blink. I think they need one more. They can't, I don't even think they can do it with the Winter Wyvern and the Magnus. They need the likes of, yeah, the Shadow Shaman uh, should be enough. No, they don't have the uh, Invoker spells as uh, Meep picks off uh, Cook on bottom lane. The Invoker. Nice. So we are going to see the Blink Dagger now on the Magnus. And uh, Beast is going to back up a little bit. The uh, cute little play there. He um, Morton's water runs in to find his um, find his creep stacking the uh, the ancients. Um, Beast uh, quickly disassembles his uh, helm of the dominator, which uh, denies the uh, neutral creep and stops the gold going to uh, going away of Watson's water. So again, these little things. You, you, you can just, I didn't realize you could disassemble it. Yeah. I, knew, I knew if you dominated another creep, you could uh, yes, yeah, so disassemble the other one. it. Uh, same as denying the creep, so he's gonna he's gonna deny that gold to uh, Thornton's water. I can feel Xenex. They're looking to try and do something with this blink dagger on Sule. But whether they they, they want to find more than just a support, they want they need to like have a high impact with it. I think two or three kills at least. Normally you're like quite happy to get an RP, but yeah, I do think they need to to find the spend at the moment. But it means committing four heroes to potentially do that. You need the Shadow Shaman lockdown. You need probably the Winter's Curse. You need the Invoke to be able to throw out that Sunstrike. You need yeah, the Magnus so, RP. Uh, so who's going to TP bottom lane for tier 2? And they do see Ryan here. I mean, this would be a pretty decent kick. Uh, I don't even think they need RP. This pickoff no. should be happening. <laughs> There's the Hex. In comes the Shackles. The Sunstrike as well. Easy pickings, but Sudley, he wants more. Going after Cook here. Throws down the defensive Tombstone. And that's going to be some nice gold going the way of water. Or whoever gets the last hit in the end. Much in the meantime, uh, middle tower goes down, taken by Thunder. So that's the first 2-1 for... Uh, Second, second, second tier one. <laughs> straight away. Uh, Winter Wyvern using that Corner straight away. He does have the uh, Arctic Vent to try and get himself out. And he will fly himself over those trees. With Ichigo, he's got his wards up again. They came off cooldown about 20 seconds ago. This is where every time you have that up, you really want to try and at least get some damage done in the tower. Let, maybe even take it. Yeah, and uh, you're waiting for some key timings here. Juggernaut's uh, 2 XP off uh, level 11 as well. He is going to have the Perseverance up, so he's... Uh, not too far from the Battle Fury. Yeah, he's been, he's, I mean, compared to Sven, his farm isn't great, but he's actually been farming okay. Like, 96 last minute, like 96 last hits, 17 minutes in. It's yeah, definitely he has, respectable. He has been pressured a lot more than the uh, than the Sven has. A couple of heroes being in his lane, whereas Sven's only really had that, uh, that pseudo Magnus, the top lane, to stop him farming. And, uh, yeah, Queen of Pain going to finish the Orchid. Really good timing for her. It's good, uh, very uh, good against the uh, Invoker. Think dagger. So what does Juggernaut go after he gets that Battle of Fury? Do you think he goes for something like a Blink Tag, or does he go for an SMY? Does uh, it go straight for the Manta? It's either going to be the SMY or the Manta. He is going to know it's the Orchids. It's, it's been built on Quop, so the Manta is definitely a good choice. Oh, his meat gets uh, Orchid in mid, and Fiend Script. Not <laughs> Easy pickings. Yeah. DD rune on Queen of Pain as yeah. well. Just a uh, good, good smoke use from Melt there. It's run by the earlier, and uh, yeah, going to get uh, a quick kill on, on Meep. He's, uh, he's not going to be too disappointed about death. He uh, did spend all his gold on the Blink Dagger, so he's not going to lose too much gold, but... Sudley tries to get the skew on well, but <laughs> there's going to be wasted. Now he has no escape mechanism apart from his allies, Akame and Rhyme. Probably... Actually, oh, the RP gets used. It's not going to do anything either. The Dark Seal was uh, okay there. Now the Omni Slash coming through. Going to get the kill. The Sonic Wave as well. The wall is down. Mute 2 for 2 used to pull that Widget's Curse, but look, here comes the Sven. Level 14 already. God Strength, SOY in hand, and this is going to be three dead, two for, uh, on the SG for now. The Nightmare Gonna be coming off at Sudley. He's gonna be really careful. He's gonna go down. It's a triple kill going the way of Sven and a five man wipe. I, yeah. Yeah, really good nightmare there from Welp. You know, stops the RP doing anything. Uh, I think it was a, a bit of an awkward RP. Obviously, Bisa with his incredible farm finishes the SMY, picks up a blink dagger, sees a fight happening. Suddenly, he's bottom. God's strength activated and the. Uh, 
you know, starts uh, starts whacking him. Yeah, we did see uh, we did see the Dark Seer illusions uh, get uh, get hit by the Witness Curse and start start attacking Kundral. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, Ryan uh, doing some damage to teammate, but looking at the, the gold, it is going to be a seven and a half eight k lead for the uh, for seems good. This is definitely looking confident, but I like. With with a lineup like Xenex with the sort of you know wombo combo, mm. it always it really doesn't matter how far behind you are. Although well, it looks like he's going to go down. Yeah, yeah. And um, if we just note the net worth, Sven is on twelve thousand, and the next he hero, hero uh, highest hero is on eight thousand. It's the Queen of Pain there with the Orchid. So the Juggernaut, it's fourth. He's not even third. You know the safe lane farm. He's half the net worth of the Sven at the moment. So. Yeah, obviously that uh, that is going to change because we start seeing the Battle Fury and the Empower levels up. Uh, I think he's going to be able to catch up. Oh, that vacuum wall. Me is in a bit of trouble here. He's going to get away. He gives it a walk away. Wards are farmed up by Sven. Not a uh, not small feat, but the wards do cost a lot of gold. And uh, they're not actually getting at the tower with those wards, so they're going to back off. They force some rotation. Soon we get some... Sorry, Watson's walking to the far top. Throws it to that Battle Fury. Meanwhile, Rhyme's in the enemy jungle. He's going to farm up... Uh, so, and there is a smoke from Iridium as uh, Meep actually picks off. Just died so room. quick. This is the power of the alacrity and yeah. Well, that yeah, the blink cold snap there, and the orchid went, but the bonus damage is already there on the cold yeah. snap. So Invoker only needs to do is right click down. Yeah, really good pick up there from Meep, and he's actually going to leapfrog uh, Kundral to second in net worth. So really important kill. He does get the uh, the dominating trick actually for 850 gold. So yeah, big pick up from. You know, they spoke up top as well. Obviously, Kundral uh, he does have buyback. There's a tier one tower top, so uh, we probably are going to see what comes out from him. If they Ryan's being yeah. chuckled up by the top lane. It's everything. It's just everything. Yeah. Really good play from uh, the next. They're going to find another kill as well. Nice. Two kills now for me. This is, is it really going to bolster him. And uh, Disa. Ooh, I wonder if he's going to going to walk into the walk into the river and see this DD and think right. <laughs> While they're up at top, I can actually do Roshan. Five v one. Let's go. Well, there yeah, is right no tier now, one tower bot. There's no tier. And Visa finishes a yeah. BKB as well. So 21 minutes. Blink. Sanjin Yasha. Humble Dominator. Treads. BKB. That's about OP, please. Yeah, that's uh, 685 uh, gold per minute currently from Visa. I mean, what? <laughs> he said the guy knows how to farm. He's got. He's, he's got. A, he's got 250 creeps at 21 minutes. That's a lot more than 10 a minute. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. Um, but again. We've seen this before, so I don't know why we're still surprised, but, uh, you know, I every time you see it, you think, ow. Because you just don't expect him to get away with it again and again and again, I think. Who's silly enough to let him do that? Yeah. <laughs> do you think something that, um, like a, an aggressive trial in would work up against that, or do you just think seems good would, would just pull it out anyway? No, I think seems good would pull it out anyway. I don't think they're too worried about the aggressive try lane, you know, Sven's pretty tanky. Um, he can put out, you know, he's got a good stun in the uh, Stormhammer for uh, your Trials, and yeah, we only rode down. I'm sorry, not gonna hit, but uh, yeah, Sven with that Aegis now as well. I think that uh, even if the Aggro Trine does go well, um, seems good and good enough with their, with their stacks. We saw the big Ancient stack coming on early for Visa. We saw some uh, some Jungle Camp stack. I think that's the way back into the game if the aggressive try does come out. Um, and I think uh, I think the confidence of their solo lanes could do well as well. So I don't think Xenix want to try force the, aggro, the aggressive try lane. I don't think that's a side effect they want to play. They want to they want to play their own game. As uh, Watson's Water gonna peep skip here behind the mid lane. It's actually, yeah, it's a pretty big deal. Mm. It's it's good that he's doing that. It's gonna stop this pressure on the mid lane. Well, actually, they're gonna get the tower anyway because the creeps are still there. And the power of the war cry, like you said, he just pops it on the creep wave, and it makes it so hard for the tower on its own to take down. Do they actually look to go high ground? It looks yep. like they will. Well, they have this Aegis, so... It's Aegis, yeah, but tends to get BKB on Sven. No, definitely Blast coming through Sven. <laughs> Has to be defensively forced off the way by the Bane. Yeah. yeah. There is going to be a salve on Welp as well, so he's going to shove that to Sven. But he's got the life still, so he's not too worried. Yeah, this is Sven. He's already at 2k net worth again, uh, 2k gold in his bank. What do you think Kundra will probably, uh, probably go for the Aghanim Scepter now? 
Yeah, it's either I think goes to Agnum Scepter, or I think he, he might just go straight for the BKB if they want to end this soon. Obviously, that's going to help uh, a lot against the, uh, the Shadow Shaman disables and against the Evoker. And uh, Shadow Shaman does find a Blink Dagger now, so they're going to have that initiation tool, you know, up against the uh, up against the BKBs to find the, uh, the quick disables with the uh, Blink X, which he has maxed. Um, so yeah, I think Tundra might look towards the BKB if they if they want to end. If not, you know, there's the like you said, there's the Agnum Scepter. There's the, um, there's the Hex, there's the Shivas, but I think, you know, looking at 2.7k gold, I think the BKB is what he wants to, what he wants to go for. Yeah. We have yet to see, like, Magnus has got, I think, have he, has he just used the RP what? I think Maybe it was twice. the Skewer in the jungle, and that's the only time we've seen it. Uh, sorry, the, the whip in the jungle that went wrong because of the Fiend's grip. Mm. I mean, he's got a four staff now, so he's got that extra long initiation, or he can blink in RP, then skewer, and then four staff himself out of danger, because Magnus is, is pretty squishy if you think about it, only mm -hmm. 1100 hit points. And that's another tower going the way of the Dire. The pressure being applied now, using that war cry, and also the god strength bringing him up high. And it's going to force out a very defensive set of wards. Maybe looking for the RP from Magnus. Four staff in the wrong direction. And now the Shadow Shaman gets a very long way shackle. They still haven't managed to bring him down. The Nightmare defensively there trying to keep him. There's the Sun Strike. Oh, oh. He's on 70 HP. And the Only and just there. surviving. Good they forced out the Glyph, they forced out the, the Serpent Wards, but. You know, only only a couple of hundred damage coming on that uh, that tier three tower when the uh, not super pop. So really good defense there from ZX. Yep. You know, but Shadow Shaman blinks and gets his tables, doesn't commit too much, so he's not like you know susceptible to the uh, you know the turnaround from the Queen of Pain with the Orchid. Um, so yeah, really good defense there from ZX. I mean, don't commit knowing that you know the Aegis is there with the BKB. If they overcommit, suddenly they're getting turned around by the Dark Seal Wall, you know, the Tombstone and the uh, reignation from the from the Aegis. So. Spin TP coming out from, uh, from what's his war on top lane. I notice there's probably a rotation from the top to, to find him. So Invoker went for the Yules. Yeah. Uh, allows him to get that one mode, that big combo out on his own. Yeah, it lets him, lets him dispel that, that Orchid as well, if he gets Orchid up by, by Kundral, and uh, allows him to dodge Stormhammer. You know, interrupt the Fiend script, so a really good item overall. Um, can dispel the Surge too. Yeah, it just sets up for the, you know, the big Invoker combo. But we uh, we always see. So what do you think he goes for next? Did he go for something like the Agnum Scepter? Is he going to go for an Octarine Core just so he can use his spells a bit more efficiently? Yeah, I think I think it's probably going to be the Agnum Scepter. Either that, or he's thinking, do I need the BKB now? Um, he's closing in on that level 17. Obviously, the Agnum Scepter nowadays is uh, doesn't just uh, reduce your quid; it actually gives you extra damage on your spells and stuff. Yeah, plus one to each of your uh, Coswexes or. Oh, yeah, I think Ag Ags is probably, apart, apart from the BKB, is will, will be the next option. Definitely one definitely of the two for, uh, for me. Or oh, do you think it's something a bit more defensive, like Lincoln Sphere? Obviously, because you've got that Fiend script coming out. Um, you want, want maybe want to be putting it on the Juggernaut, or is that something for the Shadow Sherman, the Winter Wyvern, to be going towards? I think until the until the Bane finds that the BKB on the Glimmer Cave, yeah. you know, they've got the tools to deal with the, uh, the Fiend script that they should go against. Uh, <laughs> Two, Two shots down. Mid, yeah. I don't know what he was doing. He blinked in there, maybe expecting the Magnus to follow him. I, I, I don't think he expected the, uh, the presence from Seems to Bear. Probably expected him to be found at our own jungle, be ancient, maybe their jungle, but... Uh, no Serpent Wards to defend now. Mm. He's going to be down for 30 seconds. And the Sven, he's in God's strength. He's not going to be able to get the right clicks on, and this is a very good wall. He uses the BKB even. Um, interesting choice there. So he's going to back himself off, and that's 10 seconds down to 9 now. And the Aegis gets uh, reclaimed as well. So that's why that's why he backs off. The Aegis gets reclaimed, and he uses the BKB, and uh, yeah, it seems good. Play it safe. We're trying to overcommit. They have this super farm Sven, but... Uh, and he's on 5,000 health now. Uh, 5,000 health, 5,000 gold. Do you think he goes for a heart, or do you think he's going to go for something like a crit stick? Moonshard. Uh, Moonshard. <laughs> yeah, as you say that, yeah, the Moonshard. He's going to go for that attack speed. Um, I think the crit could be a good option, but uh, it doesn't really help you taking down his powers. Gives you some damage, but the Moon Shard, uh, if they want to, you know, go up and siege, if it looks like they, they want to do that's how they've been, um, how we've been doing it, uh, the Moon Shard is going to help a lot. In the bottom lane, Kondral got an Invis Rune. It's going to look to go on to me, but he uses the Hex, but the self heals come out. Oh. It's even going to dodge Kondral there. And the Sun Strike, they're going to be completely off the target. They're looking to continue fighting. The Tombstone goes down, but. Uh, Okay, so no one dies there. Sonic Wave is expended. I'm not sure if Kundral didn't know that the uh, the Yules was up from me. 
the sort of thing you'd, you'd expect him to maybe maybe bait out the Yules by cancelling the, the Sonic Wave. Maybe that's what he was trying to do when obviously they're not on the own PC to maybe his hotkey keys are up a bit, but not, not something I'd expect from Pendle to just, just throw that out. Uh, I mean, there's always the odd chance, you know, a little bit of nerves come in. Yeah. He's not expecting, uh, he hasn't checked the item as well. Yeah, maybe maybe he just hasn't seen uh, seen the yours on me yet. So uh, yeah, yeah. But at the end of the day, nothing uh, nothing too big committed. He's gonna that song wave's gonna be in cool then, but they're gonna go ahead return to farming. They're probably gonna wait for the next Roshan. Uh, they already do have the uh, the Alpha Wolf in there to scout it out. So yeah, that looks to be what I seem to want to do next. Meanwhile, Zenex is farming up. Yeah. I still, I'm still looking for the big team fight from Zenex. They're not, they don't really seem to be looking for it either, which is what's surprising me. Yeah, I mean, maybe their, maybe their timing is, is coming soon with that, uh, with that Aegis. Currently not on, uh, not on Bisa. That might be something they're, they're looking to do. Yeah, and Spence just came to right-click on the tower. Meanwhile, they are going to go on him. He gets forced, himself forced off the way, though, so... Bisa just needs to play it safe. Mm. I think, like you say, while he waits for this Aegis, he does have the rest of his team to back him up, but if the RP combo with the Meteor, with the Sunstrike comes out onto the Winter's Curse, I mean, personally, I'd look to Winter's Curse, the hero right next to him, yeah. to keep him that occupied. Is, that is going to mean the damage onto the Sven is reduced, and obviously, maybe you pick off uh, an important hero from, from you get maybe the Queen of Pain if you can, probably most important, maybe the Darks here as well. Yeah. Uh, but it is going to mean the Sven is going to take reduced damage, and then he, after that, he's going to come out with the BKB with all the damage, so... They might look to just use it on, on the spend and just drop all their bursts, you know, the Omni Slash, all the Invoker spells um, onto the onto the set while, he, while he's in that Winter's Curse. So, yeah. And, I, uh, I think Welp's gonna... I wonder what Welp's gonna go for next. With the way they're playing this right now, something like a Lotus Orb would be yeah. really good. Um, you know, shove it on the... shove it on the spend. If a Cold Snap comes out, if a Hex comes out, then uh, even a Winter's Curse even, yeah, out. a Winter's Curse, that yeah. would be really, really so bad think, for uh, Phoenix. I think the Lotus Orb is, is going to be a good choice here for, uh, for a team that seems good. Uh, it's going to be the Glimmer Cape for Welp, so he's, you know, obviously that's going to help him uh, get off his own Fiend Strip. Yeah. And uh, it's going to mean there's going to need to be a reveal on uh, the side of Zenex, obviously they've got, we've got the Shadow Shaman does have sentries already. But, uh, they were smoked up and actually they're just walking right underneath this Dire Observer Ward. Mm. And the Dyer see everything that's going on at the moment, so they know they're safe where they are at the moment. They got some good aggressive wards down at the moment, so giving them a good sort of a line of attack. Whereas on the Radiant side, they've got that one Observer Ward looking over Roshan, but that's about it for now. Sun Strike. Nah, Roshan's not up for another minute or so. And yeah, Xenix, I feel like they're trying and trying to find fights, but they can't find them. No, I think the position of seems good is just way too good. They send the Sven forward, they keep everyone else back. Um, you can force that Sven out if he gets in too far. And uh, there's no RP, no one can find it. Uh, th there's no. The only thing they are looking for is the Sunstrike uh, at the moment because the Shackles are coming out. But if Shadow Shaman gets caught out on his own, he's just dead. Uh, this Dire Observer Ward's so good. They think they're not being spotted, but it's in a sort of uh, unusual position. So it's not going to be dewarded by the usual uh, deward spot. And once again, the whole of the radiant is constantly in vision to the dire. Whereas the radiant have no idea where the dire are at the moment. The power is up, but now on the juggernaut, so you can see him cleave down a wave in about three or four hits. Yeah, that's, that's definitely going to help his farm. He is, uh, he's sort of, uh, well, I say catching up, but uh, no one is really catching up to Beast <laughs> no. uh, right now. He's going to go for the, uh, the Daedalus Beast. So, are we going to see him consume that Moon Shard and then uh, pick up a put the Daedalus in, uh, in that slot? Yeah, he doesn't really need to worry about buyback, I don't think, yeah, at this stage there. of the game. Roshan has spawned up now. Alpha Wolf in the pit there, meaning that they, the Dire know exactly what's going on. Seems good. I'm sure they'll be looking to take that. Right now, it's going to go down very quickly. Daedalus in tow in the hand of Sven. Sunstrike is going to come down. They see what is going to go on, but what, can they really do anything in time? Obviously, fighting around Rosh would be uh, good for them, but they're just not going to get there in time. Roshan will end up falling, and Aegis goes the way of uh, Sven. Easy peasy. Mm. Yeah, even though they scattered that out, they were way too far away. You've got the Juggernaut up on the top lane, and you've got the rest of Xenex sitting right on their base. So they just you saw how fast Roshan was dying, though. There was no way they, they were going to get over there in time. And 
it with the Aegis. They can just put the Sven on the front lines, which they've been doing when he doesn't even have the Aegis anyway. He's got uh, 2,500 health. So much armor. He hasn't even... Oh, he does have the Warcry popped at that point. But 20 armor without it. 40 with... I mean, he has the BKB to uh, dodge all the magic damage as well. Ooh. Yeah, we're probably, we're probably just going to see the... Um, yeah, seems good. Walk up. Push out these lanes. Middle. Sven's going to deny the top tower. He's going to start walking middle. We're going to see him push in. Have Sven set up on the front lines with that walk, with the war cry. The god strength popped. Um, you know, Zenek going to try using spells against him. They've got the four stuff. Against him. Meanwhile, well, we support in the middle. Oh, the four stuff away. And away. the glimmer. But in comes the Sven. He's got the blink if he wants. Actually, he doesn't have blink anymore. He didn't go blink in the first place. He did go blink. He did get a blink. He swapped it up for the Aegis. That's, the Aegis. Ah, that's, right. that's currently on well. I he dropped. Right, and here comes the pressure now. All five of the Radiant Dyer are back together. Looking to go for the push. Radiant grouped up inside their own base, huddling away from this god of a Sven. Look at these right clicks doing so much damage. He's going to use the god strength in a little bit, of it, maybe. You can see Sudley, he's just looking for that group up, getting three or four people close together, looking for the combo. Can they find it though is the question. High ground tombstone used. Fortification now comes out, means Sven's not going to do anything with this. Uh, still no god strength being used. So I like that they put the iron shell on him as well, just add a little bit of extra magic damage to whatever he's right clicking. And the dire, they're going to try once again. Round two. Ding, ding, ding. Yeah, Tim needs to be on cooldown. Ice will comes out from, from me, Forge Spirits. Man, this is, this is a tense moment, moment. This could make or break it. Whoever wins the team fight here might have a better shot on the aggressive four star forward. He's gonna, they're going to try and bring him down. They can't do it just in time. The RP is used, catching out a couple of heroes here, pushing them through the wall. The Sonic Wave coming through. Three dead already on the Radiant side. Juggernaut's still alive for now. Meep does get uh, caught out there by the Fiends. Good. The Omni Slash coming through, but the Cleave to uh, Sven doing way too much. Hexed up, not in time. But mass buybacks for Dai needs to get themselves out of here. Although it looks like Sven, he just wants to fight. BKB comes up. He gets another kill. Double kill for him. It's going to wear off in the next couple of seconds. He needs to hit the tower. And then he's going to back himself off. And look, Juggernaut going to have to be careful. The stun is going to come up uh, as the wall is put down as well. The right clicks aren't going to be enough. And now, actually, Sven might have gone a little bit too far. The skewer catching out two people. Excellent play from Sudo. And there's going to be a couple of kills. Very important kill on Sven. If they can find more of the Queen of Pain, she's not going to be able to blink herself away as the tornado comes in. Now the yours as well. Sunstrike plus the deafening blast. It's a kill. Meep showing what he can do with those fast fingers. Yeah, but four buybacks having to come out from a Radiant there, and uh, they are still going to lose a, a solid chunk of gold. Uh, they do defend their racks, so obviously they're happy about that, but um, yeah, four buybacks coming out from, from Xenex there, it means that the network game isn't really going to be there. They're, they're still, you know, still an advantage going towards uh, what seems good, and you know, next time they're not going to have those buybacks ready. Uh, Sven might not have the Aegis, but uh, you know, we, we thought he was, uh, you know, one, one chunk did 80% uh, of, of Ishigo's health, and uh, there will be summons as well, so the Forge Spirit standing in the front. You saw him hit the, the two Forge Spirits, and Meep just has to run away from his own, uh, his own summons, it's taking too much damage. Yeah, and I was actually going to say how well it seems good to have positioned there, right before, well, right after they broke the base, they had the Sven on the front line, and then they have the Queen of Pain over to the left in the trees, and then everyone else onto that right-hand side waiting to support the Sven if you got in trouble. Unfortunately, um, well, unfortunately, it seems good, that offensive, Four staff did come out, and everyone else had to dive straight in there, which opened it up for the RP there. So, yeah, that, that aggressive full staff was. Yeah, fun. I think that's what actually made the fight there because literally all of Seems Good had to then dive and come through a tiny gap to try and get into the sports van. RP comes out, secure back as well, and everyone dies. And the uh, tower is going to go down. Shadow Shaman getting those the Serpent Wars, which is going to be cleaved up very quickly here by Sven. <laughs> Yeah, so we do see a smoke on Ishiga. I think they're going to look to use that soon. Um, AC finish on Tundra, actually. I mean, obviously that synergizes extremely well with the uh, Sven. Sven not going to get that, considering he went Moon Shard. Needs all the items slots. Can help the base as well. Mm. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Sven, the only really item he can go is the, uh, it's the Satanic. That's probably what he's going to look for next. Only about uh, 100 got off, but... He might start looking into keeping the buyback now, obviously after that death. Um, they do clean up the rest of the tier twos on, on Xenex, so... Yeah, I mean, do you think your room places the S and Y at any point? Or do you think that just now, it's going to be after the Satanic, it's going to be after buyback, and by that point you're looking yeah, at another... Yeah, he's still got the, the boost travel to go. I think 
You don't want the game to be sort of over once they get that uh, Titanic up, obviously. Um, after that, there's not really much you can do to sort of improve his injury. Obviously, he does have a Sanjin Yasha, but that is going to give him a lot of sort of move speed and mobility. Yep. So, uh, I think he's going to keep that as long as he can. So maybe he needs an entry or something. And Top lane where the Juggernaut gets pinged out. Sule, I think he saw this coming, or at least he's expecting. He's going to try and keep himself out. Not going to be in time. The Nightmare comes out, and with the rest of the team, even committing the Fiend script. But I guess better him than the Juggernaut. Saying that, he doesn't have buyback. Yeah, no, neither do any of the heroes in the Radiant, actually, I don't think. Kind of a strange decision to, blink, to, to TP out in the lane and not to blink into the trees to try it, but uh, I guess he just thought he had more time than, yeah. than he did, but the only, the only lane that's uh, really pushed is the, the bottom lane for the Dyer, so... They're not really gonna, gonna get anything from this. Obviously, a good kill. They do still have a minute, and uh, we do see Ryan pushing him in, so maybe they'll rotate in there. Uh, the Glyph will be up for Radiant, so uh, yeah, I think kind of will respawn by the time they get to the base. So not, not too big a deal. Obviously, he's not gonna be completely happy about dying, but. So, Invaker gets himself a Lincoln Sphere. This is gonna be pretty handy. Yeah, I that think that's a good itself. item because of uh, the Fiend script coming out, obviously. Um, and it's just something that Invoker doesn't want to be caught out. The Orchid, you know, it, there's a lot of focus on him because he is going to be able to pull out a lot of damage once the um, the Warcry comes up from the Sven. And you are going to be looking at mainly magic damage to do that. So maybe trying to shut down the Invoker before that can all happen. And he just wants a bit, a, a bit more defense. Daytime now. Pop. Cockerel Crows, 40 minutes into this game, 16 to 22. About a kill a minute is uh, sub half of what we've seen so far. The tornado now, EMP, oh, not EMP, the tornado, plus the meteor. Yeah, really good. Glass, uh, etc. <laughs> really good, so it's picked up by, uh, by me there, showing the Invoker Strength, you know. Does do a lot of damage with that, uh, with that combo, so. Yeah, Ryan getting a, getting a bit greedy in middle lane. Uh, but again, Nothing really going to come from it, just um, denying some farm and XP and giving some, uh, actually 800 gold to the Invoker, so uh, yeah, not the, not the biggest deal, but good farm going the way of. Yeah, and like, yeah. is that the Scary coming out for the Juggernaut there? Yep. On the Courier? He's very, very nearly got it, he just needs the point booster, so a couple, couple hundred more gold and then he'll have that, which will tank him up to no end, extra damage, the slow, goes through BKB against the Sven, so Sven is yeah. trying to run away. Yeah, and um, you know normally with a build like this, you'd see the you'd see the Juggernaut kind of lacking damage, but with that empower buff, obviously all the base stats you get from uh, from the Manta style and the Scarly, his his damage is still going to be fine. So uh, yeah, he can afford to tank up, get these sort of big stat items in, and um, still be able to put other damage with uh, with the empower. Obviously the, the play mill on the Magnus. Do you think that's going to be moving into a Shiva's guard? He get he blinks in, pops the RP, pops the Shiva's, gives yeah. everyone back. I think it is going to be the, yeah. the Shiva's guard for him. He's going to slow, slow down the attack speed of a Sven, as much as he can. <laughs> no one in the game has buyback apart from Sven, he's about to farm up his. So are we looking at another Roche? Roche is up now, this is going to be the third one, so ages and cheese. And I think the Dire, after they've pushed out these lanes, well, Radiant though, they're pushing up the top one. Yeah, they, they definitely can't take ages at the moment. They need to secure themselves a lane, get a kill or two maybe before doing that. So once again, both teams playing it a little bit safe, a little bit split pushing here and there, maybe a pick off. Uh, I think Magnus died a little bit earlier on and then after that it was the Darks here. But. Yeah, Radiant doing a good job of uh, keeping their lane pushed out. You know, um, obviously it seems good to have been ahead most of the game, but... Zelix is not letting them take complete map control. We're going to see Ishiko in the trees up top. We saw uh, we saw the Juggernaut up there farming. Um, so they're not too scared to you know go out and push out push out their lanes. So uh, we are going to keep the kind of keeping up with the network. You see it's sort of uh, sort of evened out after the uh, after the team fight in their own base. And uh, we actually see Undying. He's got the Aghanim Scepter. Yeah. This okay. So those of you uh, we don't see it too often. But when you get in your ultimate form, you still, instead of stealing four strength from under from your decay, you steal ten. Ten. That is. That's a lot. Yeah, especially on someone like a Shadow Shaman that's not really got the biggest strength pool anyway. Yeah, it's only got only got 47 strength, so. Uh... Not only does it reduce their HP, it buffs you up as well. So you'll end up seeing if this fight goes on for a long time, get two or three decays out, two or you know, stack two or three of them up as well. You're looking at like you know 2,000, 3,000 hit points on undying. 
and he right clicks like a, a monster. But like the monster he is, I guess. <laughs> the zombie. And yeah, die, they are going to move in. They managed to push out the lanes far enough, so they're going to take this Roshan very, very quickly. Sven, nearly, he's going to get 20 foot, level 25 of this, maxing himself out. What does he drop in the end? Does he blink again? I think he picks up the two TPs on the floor instead of the ages. <laughs> G's going to give away a thunder, he's going to drop his magic wand as well. Roche is just a mess at the moment. Well, actually, it's not as bad as we've seen it in the past. So yeah, with that Aegis and Cheese, maybe we'll look for another high ground siege. Oops. Yeah, Juggernaut is going to be about 70 gold from this buyback. Um, Meep has it. Meep's got 4.7k gold. He's looking for another solo kill on... Uh, yeah, in the jungle. Meep's uh, actually going to find that on Ryan. But Meteor will come through. Actually, the Grievous Screw is going to keep him alive for the moment. Yeah, he's fine. I, I, I just don't really like <laughs> <laughs> Right, and I keep calling them Greaves, 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 and I, I, that's gonna keep happening. The Guardian I, li I like out. it. I like it. Mm. And and Bane's actually got a gem, so they're gonna try and take map control away from the Radiant, which they've done a pretty good job of already. Getting some nice wards down. Yeah. Nice deward, and they're gonna push now mid. Mid, obviously the the obvious choice here. No T3 to defend the barracks. Fortification is there if the Radiant want it, but in terms of buybacks, buybacks are up actually for the Radiant side. The fight was. Yeah, it should go and he's about 100, so he's going to eat the shot and he's going to be. Uh, he's still going to be uh, sort of 100 gold from a buyback, but Meep's going to have his up. Uh, the Winter Weapon doesn't have. Pseudo is going to have his up as well, just about. And on the on the Dire side, where's. There's buybacks on the uh, on the Sven and the and the Queen of Pain. And now here comes the push. The wards are putting down. They need to maybe focus these and <laughs> the cold snap onto Sven. And he gets four stops aggressively once again. Still no Winter's Curse being uh, committed here. The tombstone goes up. Nightmare defensively here. Sven does also then throw out the war cry. Not going to help you against the pure damage. And in comes Kundal BKB. Sonic Wave ripping through the enemy heroes. But anomaly slashed. Only on Kundal B gets the cheese off in perfect timing here. And now Juggernaut spins. But he's getting fiends gripped up now. What can they do? Still no Witch's Curse has been put down yet. Waiting for the opportune moment. But Mew 2 doesn't want to hold on to it too long. Skewer coming through still. No RP being used just yet. Awesome Water doesn't have that Omni Slash. But the tower, the barracks is going to start going down here. But we do see actually this vent. The, the uh, Aegis does get used. And there, look at Ryan, he's just gonna go down really quickly, the fast star forward, three man RP, they're fighting, they're doing it! Four, three dead, four dead, making the Sven only, the, the whelp here, Bane running himself away, TP up, is he gonna get himself out of here? They can't see him, do they have a way of cancelling? Oh, the tornado, it's not a five man wipe, but they did get five kills. And, uh, wow, look, look, look at that XP, really, from yeah. Wait, the perfect RP, Mew242, you know, they bring down the Aegis once, uh, you know, rhymes to the next to the Sven, Winter's Curse comes out, like you were talking about, you know, wait for the God's Strength to come out, Winter's Curse onto Rhyme, the Sven chunks him down, Pseudo comes in with a big skew, a big RP on top of the Ice Wall and all the, uh, all damage out from the next, and they're going to push themselves, and, uh, Sven's going to be forced to buy back. Yeah, there is a buyback also on the Queen of Pain, she doesn't have an ultimate though, so maybe, uh, you know, she won't be as effective. Does have all good vision pretty well. Oh, nice Manta Judge coming out there from Water. He's got the Alacrity on him as well, so he's hitting fast and hitting hard. That's the Rax going to go down. That, that was the range Rax. What if the comes out from the melee one? And in fact, that push earlier to die didn't get any objectives themselves. So that's the melee barracks giving them the super creeps, which should give them the advantage for now. They're going to back off. I think this is the right decision. Yeah. Yeah. Push that's out the, the top and bottom. That's the shame for the, uh, the uh, you know, the Alacrity empowered Juggernaut just chomps through those towers and. Uh, yeah, obviously, but not even the Serpent was going to be there, still on cooldown from the defense. And, uh, you know, Xenex keep their melee barracks yeah. in their middle lane with that, with that great fight, so, uh, yeah. And who would have thought that would have happened? Yeah, we would have thought with the way that Beezer was pushing up that top, uh, mm. in the middle lane, that obviously that racks would fall. They take a great fight and they just storm all the way up the dial lane and pull it out the back. Yeah, that was, that was beautiful. Really, really well done. And once again, an aggressive four staff being used. It wasn't as effective this time, but they managed to take the Sven down to about half hit points. Mm. And I think that was it. They, you saw the Magnus skewer away to the bottom tier 3 tower and just keep the Sven out of the fight while Xanax dealt with the rest of the heroes. And then once he was there, there was the RP. And it, it, it was just a massacre. Bane barely got out by the skin of his teeth. If that tornado had gone out a second earlier, it would have been a five-man wipe. 
not getting the bait isn't really the biggest deal anyway, so they can easily count that as a win. So now mid lane is going to be constantly pushing down. Mm -hmm. And if we look at the uh, the gold drop after that fight, it's a massive oh swing my. in favor of Zenex Gaming. Going right back down to, well, yeah, right Jogun back up. Jogun Jogun now, within, now actually we're in 3k of Beast, so like we talked about how far Beast was. Obviously the net worth doesn't actually take into uh, to account the, uh, the the consumed moon shard, so there is about an extra 4k you could say on, uh, on Beast still. Yeah, but he's, he's six slotted now, he's got that BKB, the level two booster travels. I think you could probably go, go for Skadi instead of the Sanjin Yasha, but they're going to go try and catch him out now. He's all on his own for now, his team is trying to catch up to him, the Winter's Curse, they're trying to do what they can, the Omni Slash comes through, but, and the RP onto three. Where's the Tombstone? Just finally come out, but the, the combo is just too strong. Three dead on the die, and they're just going to call GG. Beast has had enough of this. And Xenex take this first game. Take the first game draw from absolutely one nowhere. They find one perfect fight. And that was a five-minute turnaround. Yeah. Five-minute turnaround. Team Scud dominating that match for, what, we saw 45 minutes? Yeah. And then it's just one fight turns out completely around. Xenex, yeah, they are very experienced. They are, you know, finding this high ground to play the Brazilian Vogue. They're going to be uh, the Magnus. And yeah, you know, we talk about sort of... Uh, Mistakes being made from Xenex in that game, there weren't that many. Obviously, they let the, the Sen farm, but they weren't getting picked off about buybacks. You know, they weren't getting, uh, they were using their spells well to defend. They weren't over committing and, uh, you know, giving away kills for free. So, yeah, they really good patience from Xenex. Wait until they find that perfect fight. And, uh, you know, having faith in the, in the empowered juggernaut as well. And uh, obviously, great execute gank at the end there. Beast yeah. uh, yeah. So sort of farming up at the Ancients, not expecting it, it comes out. We drop everything on Visa and yeah, they're just going to And was that seems good getting a bit overconfident, just letting the Sven tank the towers get in there on the tier three, or was that just, there was no way they, they could help that? Because they did have great position on mm. there. The Sven was, just, I think he was on his own. You know, yeah. maybe if they were, were a bit closer, there was the risk of the RP, but maybe if you put the Undyne right next to him and then just mm. let that go on. Or was that just Xenex just outplayed? Yeah, I think I, I, I think for you know that fight from Xenex is uh, you know one of the best execute we've seen all tournament. I, I don't think you can can really plan for that. And um, yeah, just you know maybe maybe a bit of frustration coming out from seems good, but you know we saw them they weren't overcommitting either as well uh, up until that point. You know, I mean even even in that fight, you know Beast is Beast is dead. Uh, the Aegis dies in front of a, uh, the barracks. He's not sort of at the tier fours. He's not dived in too far. So yeah, just a, just a great. Great game from Xenex, I think. And I was going to ask the question, do you respect Van der Sven? But after that fight, I don't even think you need to, <laughs> no. I, I think they've, they've found a way to, way to deal with it and pulled it off amazingly. Yeah, I think maybe we'll see Seems Good look to, uh, look to maybe ban out with Magnus even, because yeah. you know we were looking at Sven's farm early on compared to a Juggernaut, mm. you know, almost double his net worth. Suddenly the Battle Fury and Empower comes out. You know, they, they kind of turtle, um, and they're going to take it. And, Meep on the Invoker, so 16 and 5, yeah. making things happen. And, uh, you know, we died solo mid to Kundral, had, the, had, a, had a pretty tough mid match up after the first blood and battle when goes to Kundral, but he brings it back and, um, yeah, great performance from him. I think, uh, I mean, you know, both teams are pretty comfortable with these drafts, but I think, uh, you know, the Winter Wyvern and the Invoker for, for Xenex, I, I'm not sure we're going to see uh, teams good let them get um, as comfortable a draft next time. Yeah, so I think we're going to take a quick break here. Mm -hmm. First game is done, so that makes it a one-all in this best of yeah. five series. And uh, no, I, now it's just, you, uh, you just want to see more three. Dota. You want to see more Dota. Oh, it needs to go all the way. Yeah, yeah. No, all four after, games. After that game. Yeah. All right, so uh, thanks very much. For, so from here on the casting desk, we'll see you in about 10, 15 minutes. Stay tuned for more Dota action. We'll be back. Peggy 16. Courage! Optimism! Rivers of blood! Teamwork! Arc mine out! Deploy force field! I am become death! Destroyer of worlds! Gaze upon Toby in despair! Death machine! Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Emerge Dota 2 Cup at Insomnia. We are about to go into this second game, and you've crashed. Ah, oh, I know. Uh, <laughs> Good stuff. 
Anyway, so we're now one all. Remember, Zenex did have a one game advantage. Seems, seems, seems good at the one, seems good good had one, had one game, game advantage, advantage. Yeah. But now we're one all after Zenex uh, win that game. Very surprisingly, mm. I think we thought uh, Team Squid were doing very well in that first game. Yeah, but uh, Zenex kind of uh, kind of was the master of high ground defense, and we. Um, we saw why in that game, you know, the, uh, the composure and the patience to... Uh... Yeah, you'd think when a Sven gets 700 creeps in a game, <laughs> they're, they're not going to be able to throw that away. But it happened. They took a great fight. There was a Winter's Curse onto Rhyme with a Sven stood right next to him. Yeah, I mean, it, it was, I mean, but the RP, it was be beautiful, like, mm. teamwork coming out from Xenex, and yeah, it'll be also, interesting uh, to see if they can do it again. Yeah, and also yep. man on the screen, uh, Mute 242 on the Winter Wyvern in that fight, you know. The patience and really, really the composure to not not panic when there's all these spells going off. You know, rhymes near the bottom to two. There's a wall. There's a tombstone. Spells are going off everywhere. But you'd have the composure to to wait for these spells. It's uh, really good as. So how the game started, and I'm not in the game. <laughs> this might. Uh, well, we are into the draft of this second kind of slash third game, I, I can, guess. Uh, if I can reconnect. You can reconnect. Well, we can look on the screen and uh, see what's going on. And once again, we see pretty standard bands coming out. Um, Doom, Dazzle, although the Earthshaker, like, I mm. is, he, is he top tier band material? I think uh, if, maybe you, if you watch Ryan, Ryan play, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, true. we have seen Ryan play the, uh, the Earthshaker. Um, seems good, gonna ban out the, uh, <laughs> Dark and win twice again for Xenex. Yeah. They feel so confident on this hero. Yeah, they really do. And, uh, but Radiant get their Shadow Fiend. Mm. This is big. This, this, yeah. this, he can work so good, so well. Get some stacks out. I would not be surprised though if the Dire end up uh, do moving early on into the game, like before we, the bell goes, before the runes spawn. Move around, get some D wards in on that. Those pool camps that the Shadow Fiend really likes to farm up with the razors, and they also get the tusk. Mm. The Shadow Fiend tusk. Here oh. we saw uh, we saw band out uh, in the in the first game in the first phase. So you know, the band's kind of moving a bit. Obviously, we see the Dark Seal was played in the first game, being banned out, and uh, the Earthshaker, so changing up the picks a little bit. And uh, we see the Invoker again, so same opening from, uh, from Xenex. And at this point in the second phase, do you think we're going to see a Magnus ban? Yeah, we might see a Magnus ban. Um, Considering there's a Wyvern and an Invoker again mm -hmm. for Xenex. Yeah, maybe, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll see if the uh, War Xenex, Xenex want to play as their, as their carry here, obviously. Works a lot better if you've got a melee carry. Uh, they do like to play with Wraith King. So sort of we do see the Magnus ban. So yeah. 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 Here, it's really gonna, you know, really good at defending high ground. Um, really good at helping. Uh, Can I recommend restarting Steam? Yeah, I think so. But anyway, yeah, Bane is not going to make it through in this game. It, it did a lot of work in the last game. To be yeah. fair, for uh, seems good. Yeah, I, I must say, I think he's a very tricky hero to play sometimes. Very, very positional, because you've got mm. this channel ultimate. But if you can do it, you know, combo up with one other hero, you can pick off the cores easy peasy. Yeah, obviously, the Fiend's Grip is a great tool to uh, do some magic community. There's a lot of damage early on, really good control, good range. So, uh, yeah, they're going to be denied that. Uh, well, was playing that last game to, to good effect, obviously. So, as the game goes on, we didn't see as much of an effect from it, obviously. Then they had a lot of spells to use at range to cancel cancel the fiend script, you know, with the all the invoker spells, they've got uh, you know the RP, the secure. And we're gonna see the, the Magnus and the Juggernaut ban actually. Wow. <laughs> yeah, that's not going through. But the Sven's still in the pool. But we saw they dealt with them pretty easy this last time. So. Yeah, but that was only after one fight, you know, he did spend forty five minutes dominating that game, so So all the heroes we know uh that Bisa likes to play. Is the Slark. The Slark yeah, yeah. That worked out pretty well. There was another hero, didn't we see him play? Trying so to play the Wraith King? Oh yeah, the Wraith King. Another farming-centric mm. hero. And what yeah. could, I think Tusk is actually a pretty big pickup here because he can save people. It, mm. um, he's good against the Winter Wyvern. He blinked, well, maybe Snowballs. Snowballs past someone, picks them up, preventing any, uh, any damage from the Winter Wyvern. Or too much damage, but the Silencer comes out. We mm. A hero I have not actually... Did we, I don't think we've... There's been one game at least. One game we saw with a silencer. A silencer, and it can work out so well. It didn't I swear he stole so much in at the beginning mm. of the game? Well, it's going to work out really well like, up against the uh, up against sort of the big combos that Zenex like to run. Um, you know, one spell goes out for example, Winter's Curse. Check out that global silence, and it's going to uh, you know stop all that, all, that, all those nasty shenanigans. And 
Good against Invoker as well. Invoker obviously likes to cast a lot of spells. And that big silence is going to uh, you know, put a dent in that. So. so we do often see Invoker go for the Yules. Kind of a counter to the, to the Global Silence. Maybe the BKB as well is going to come out. So good counters to silence. Uh, it's it's, it's kind of hard. He seems to counter most heroes, to be honest. But I guess Drow Ranger. Drow Ranger. Hero, Drow but, Ranger. And Abaddon straight yeah. away for Rome. And if we look, look at Xanax, it's three ranged heroes at the moment. So Drow Ranger's aura is going to be adding so much bonus damage. I, I do think we need someone like a, a front line to stop. I mean, the Tusk is going to be, snow, be able to snowball on that Drow Ranger. So that's going to take away the ultimate when they do, they do get in close. Yeah. But until then, uh, Drow Ranger is just going to have a run in the field. And it's going to boost Invoker in his lane as well, making it yeah. even easier. He can maybe go for the Coswex build instead of the Cos Exhort yeah. because he'll have damage in lane. Right. Well, if he wants to, that is. Yeah. Um, maybe we'll see a Visage. We know Drow Ranger Visage combo is just, it's actually insane. Push towers quickly, you can focus heroes quickly. But they go with a Warlock. A Xenex okay. Classic. This is this a Xenex Classic. classic. Okay. Yeah, so we've not seen this this tournament. This is something they used to run. They used to run the, uh, the offlane Warlock, played by, uh, played by Sudal. Uh, obviously, you've got that heal. Good range, 300 move speed. Um, it's kind of tanky early on, some good stats. And yeah, the havoc that can be caused with uh, when he gets like an Aghanim's Refresher up is, is no joke. So it's, it's uh, so hard to fight yeah. into that. And also, you know, with the, uh, he has good run like damage as well. Again, buffed up by the Drow, another range hero. And that's just gonna like, you know, obviously we do have a silencer to kind of counter that. So maybe we'll see the Warlock go for something to remove that silence. Not typically seen, you normally just see the, uh, you know, the Midas Aghanim's Refresher, but. Yeah. yeah, seems to go for the Abaddon that we saw against WoW Gaming. Um, probably going to run that in the offlane again. Yeah. Uh, so, and Drow Rage is a hero we can definitely run at. Um, obviously, there is going to be those uh, Frost Arrows and the Drow, but I think if Abaddon can get points up in the Aphotic Shield and the Curse of Avernus, then Drow might have kind of a hard time dealing with the, the Abaddon. Yeah, the thing, the thing I see with Seems Good lineup at the moment is, so they have this task for initiation, but it's not the best, and they need to focus the Warlock before he can get his ultimate mm. off. It destroys fights. Yeah. So I think this last pickup has to be a, a really strong initiation hero. Well, I think I think they're still looking for their Beast hero. Um, Beast can play Shadow Fiend. Um, but yeah, he's gonna. Oh, oh. The spirit. So it's probably gonna be the. Maybe it's gonna be a Beast of Silence though. And they go for. Uh, they go for Chikira, right? So we're probably gonna see the Warlock nice. Chikira dual off lane, coming out from. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be. It's gonna be the Beast of Silence. So he's gonna be playing that Coral Silencer. I'd imagine. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, we got a little bit of a pause, and that will give us time to introduce ourselves, the commentators who will be running you through this little story of a match. I'm Zambrella. To my left is Robin Roll, and to my far left, it's Faldal. So hopefully we'll have a great game like the first one. I mean, it was, that was fantastic. And from this lineup, I can see lots more fighting heroes. Hopefully <laughs> we'll have nice swings up and down, but it looks like to be a great game as this pause is about to uh, go. Seems good on the Radiant side, whereas Xenex, they'll be on the Dire. So swap over this time. Uh, I think generally players, teams, most most teams prefer the radiant side, but some prefer the die. Yeah, and uh, the spirit breaker last week coming out for, for cook on seems good. I think that's a great counter yeah. to the draw ranger. Mm. Really good counter. Okay. So, uh, you know, you whack out that charge of darkness onto him. Uh, obviously, the gust can be there to uh, help him out, give him, give him that silence so he can't follow up with uh, with an effort strike, but. Yeah, just a hero that loves to get in close, has the means to get in close to this Drow Ranger. Um, the Dark Shield was banned out, so we're not going to have a combo up with uh, the Iron Shield we see. But at the same time, we are going to have a combo with the Abaddon, maybe. You know, you shove the Aphotic Shield onto the, uh, onto the Spirit Breaker, he dives the tower, that can explode, and uh, you know, he can keep going. So it's going to be a. So Conjure will be going mid with the SF, and it's a farming. Okay, it is a farming it's silencer. Farming silencer. <laughs> Damn it, friends keep falling. Anyway, so uh, do you reckon we're going to see the uh, the good old Shadow Blade into Hex? I do like it, and I think it works out very well. Yeah, we might see that. We might see the, the Rod of Atos. Um, yeah, there's, there's a little bit of you could, you could go for the Midas. Obviously, a hero doesn't have much flash farming, so maybe we see the Midas. But yeah, obviously, Beast is playing it. Except him to get a lot of farm. Don't, don't, don't think just because he's not playing. Uh, this big farming hero, but he's not going to be farmed. He's going <laughs> to yeah. still going to be hitting creeps as much as possible. He's still going to be putting out that damage. So um, yeah, but this this sort of five range strat with the with the Drow Aura coming out from Xenex is kind of a kind of a throwback to when we used to used to see you sort of as you said the ship Drow Visage. But yeah, I, I do expect him to run the dual off lane with the 
The Kira Warlock, I think, is uh Dude's actually walking to the top lane right now. So uh, he does he doesn't want Abaddon to put down this ward to put on the camp. But we might have a fight on this top lane, but I think who do, I mean both teams have pretty strong uh, level one fighting. Obviously with the extra damage coming out from the Drow Ranger with her precision aura for all of her allies. It could be very uh, it could be very scary for someone like a Shadow Fiend who's only got five thirty hit points. There is the snowball, ice shards, the charge, Abaddon with aphotic shield, very helpful, but here can we go, here comes the team fight, the ice shards capped out two heroes, this is not good, but the ice shards, the, I mean the frost, uh, the ice path doing a lot of work, still no one dead yet, Meep very low, good, trying to get healed up, not going to happen, that's Cook getting the kill, but then he goes down as well, Ichigo in a lot of trouble, trying to run up the high hill, we might get some uphill missed chances, and that's a double kill going the way of the drow, not a hero, you want to get farmed too quickly, and now they turn, another great ice path catching up too, Rhyme, no manner to keep himself alive, it's a three for one trade off already, 20 seconds into the game, four kills, and we definitely see Xenex coming out on top of that. A uh, little bit more than a tussle mm. at the top rune. Yeah, all five heroes uh, from both teams in their top rune. And there's you know, some good initiation from the Tusk with the Ice Shards. But as you say, that Drow Aura on all five range heroes, he's going to come out with a right click. So. Matt, so you wouldn't normally expect Ice Path to do so much work. But when you land it on like four heroes, yeah. Yeah. it's yeah. going to do some work. And uh, so yeah, and it looks like we've got, so he's got Sule playing this off lane Warlock. Well, so, well, it's a solo safe lane warlock, and we're going to have an aggro trial lane. We were talking about this uh, yesterday. Yeah, and I just think it's uh, it's the easiest way to shut down Beezer. You know, they need to be punishing him. They can't give him all the space to farm up, because it does make him deadly when you, he farms for 20 minutes, and then all of a sudden he pops out in the lane and says, here I am. Well, pack is going to go, and the ice pass is going to go there as well. The Arctic Band's doing some damage to him. He is slowed down for now. Dude. Frost Arrow's coming out from the Drow Ranger. Actually level 2 with that double kill now, only a minute and 20 into the game. Yeah man, this, this Drow Ranger is going to start hitting so hard, especially when you get to that level 6. Buffing up your allies a lot as well. Uh, so this dual off lane though, it's going to be Cook, coupled up with Rhyme going up against uh, Warlock. But so Warlock's kind of like an interest, like one of these sort of niche off laners. Uh, can't go in as well as he gets charged on, but he's got the heal. Shadow Wood does so much like heal and, and quite a lot of damage as well. So he can stay in this lane, he'll be fine. His, his good animation, a lot of base damage as well. Look, he's hitting for 67 damage. Mm. Makes things fairly simple for him. But this mid lane is going to be Condrill on the Shadow Fiend going up against Meep's Invoker, which we saw did very well last game. But it looks like maxing out this Quas into the Cold Snap. So like uh, I mentioned earlier, it looks like we might be going for a Quas Wex Invoker. Yeah, I think, I think we will be seeing the Quas Wex this game. Um, DMP great up against Abaddon. Um, you know, I don't hear who likes to cast a lot of spells and run at you, but when he has no mana, it's difficult for him to mount the aphotic shield in the mist coil. So yeah, I think we're gonna see gonna see the prospect. I think it's the same with the Spirit Breaker as well. If he's gonna run into an EMP, he's gonna have no mana for a charge away, it's gonna put him in a really bad position. The ice shards going on uh, mute now, but then he catches him on the wrong side. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Sule is going to go down the TP rotation in from the support. The ice Path is actually going to split the two heroes in uh, in half, and no mana yet for Spear Break. He's using that clarity. Is he going to get up to that 100 mark? I don't think he will. Mute 242 is trying to find him. Cook, Duke it out, and the tree line's eating his way. That's a lot of tangos, though, being used. He turns and right clicks more TP support. This is the Warlock who has respawned, coming back into the fight, and Cook is in a dangerous position. Got to wait another 10 seconds or so before he's got that Charge of Darkness. He's waiting. He's tanky. He he might be able to do this. He's turning to right click the Winter Wyvern. Splinter Blast isn't going to help you for now. It's a bash, but the Ice Bar comes in at just the right moment. So he, they do manage to pick off the Warlock and force rotations in from the two supports, meaning that Watson Wards, he's left on his own as a Drow Ranger, which is not really where you want to be. So these two supports will probably end up uh, going back to base and then TP back to the bottom lane. Yeah, really good patience for Mission Game with the Ice Bar there. Not throw down instantly. Um, knowing that you know, you can either wait, see if the uh, Spirit Breaker gets a mana to throw out the charge, he can throw out the Ice Path then when he sees the mana come up, or just waiting for the last second, obviously, Cook baited him by thinking he can kill uh oh, Speaking of Drow being on her own, <laughs> they get yeah. the kill on her. Snowball Ice Shards. Got up. Mid lane, looks like we're gonna have a fight. The tornado comes out, the ice path, but behind him is the spirit breaker trying to save his mid laner. Control is gonna survive from this, and now me gotta be careful. Slow down a lot, the long raise. It's not gonna be enough to bring him down. And he salves himself up, and obviously with the uh, quas regen as well, he should be okay. Drow, she takes a lot of damage from these uh, level two glaives. 
as I carry silence, you generally uh, skip out first the silence and go for the glaives and the last word with the snowball. Now, this is a DD onto a task, and the ice path is not actually does actually connect to him on the end, and he's caught in a dangerous place as Ice Shard is not really helping him out there. That's yeah. such a clever play, though, with the Arctic Burn being used to get over the Ice Shards, and then the, the Ice Path coming through, trapping the Tusk in a cage that he's made himself. Nice. Nice work there. How's, uh, how's Ryan doing? So he's... I, this is interesting. Like, PMS, I think, is a, a really underrated item, especially if you're going to be taking a lot of harass from heroes and creeps. And the extra... The extra... It gives you extra armor as well, because of the Agi. Yeah, action packed already. Three to five, five minutes into this game. How's it, Shadow Fiend? Yeah, Shadow Fiend is seriously outlast hitting Meep, though, even though he has extra bonus damage. The raises are uh, really helping him out. He's now going to this uh, medium camp. Uh, no stacks for him at the moment, but they'll, I'm sure they'll come out later on, maybe. Uh, Cook or something decides to move elsewhere. Meep's are catching up in this, uh, this bottom lane, only a couple of feet. Three kills behind the, uh, the Drow range now. Does pick up the, the treads. Um, so obviously, you know, it's gonna be tanky if he sets him to, to strength with about 850 HP. And uh, yeah, it's gonna buff up his attack speed and damage with his base as well. So uh, he, he's seeing it right now. I think we might oh, have yeah. to see the. This uh, is production value right here. I was set to offline and now I've gone to online. So I don't know what happened there. Sorry, folks. <laughs> well played, Steam. Well played. Ryan now is going to chase after Zulu. He's got the uh, he's got the chaotic offering. I like that. He's got so a couple point in stats. He's going to get charged on the Zulu's in a bit of trouble. The fossil shields coming through first off. Cook Golem's going to go down though, and this is it catches Ram on the wrong side of the tower. The Golden Brace is going to keep Mutant alive for now. Zulu's being chased down. The right clicks the borrow time, keeping Ram alive. One more right click. Zulu does actually go down. The bottom gets the last hit on there. I think it was the fossil shield burst that killed him off. And it's a one for one. Spirit Breaker Rhymes going back in. He's popped out a Fossic Shield. The Flesh Gorm, though. Uh, flesh, sorry, Fire Gorm still going to be doing right click damage. Mute. He gets a Golden Brace off and Warlock. He's going to get the right click damage from the Gorm. Was that the play? Mm. Well, obviously, Rhyme thinks he's going to get that kill. Uh, that was very strange. I, yeah. he, that was the Golem, and it does so much damage in, earlier. Uh, by mute. Obviously, yeah. that. I damage. think he kind of misjudged that. He did think, oh, I've got the Fossic Shield. I can kind of keep on diving onto the Winter Wyvern, and then the Fire Gorm comes out with. Yeah. Just stands up and says, yeah, no, I'm going to take you down. Yeah, Mute makes a small mistake at the start of that fight. Uh, accidentally, he uh, uses the Golden Brace on himself, rather than Sudal, <laughs> uh, which would have, would have kept him alive. But they're still going to get two kills from that, so uh, they're not going to be too displeased. The Golden yeah. Sudal do some good damage. Think about it, couple the last word, uh, I mean, the Shadow Word with the Golden mm. Brace. That's a lot of heals. A lot of heals. A yeah. lot of heals. And you saw it took actually like ages for them to actually finish off yeah. the Warlock. They did in the end, which is good for SG, but... Very strange as uh, Rhyme now is going to continue to chase down the Warlock. And Warlock doesn't actually have his golems anymore. He's going to need some TP rotations in, I think. <laughs> Look at Rhyme, he's just going ham. He's got the borrowed time, forces out that TP. Although Jakiro cancels that, wants to stay in this bottom lane. Keep the Jowl Ranger safe where possible. But Kirk, he's going in for the charge. Ishard should come out in just a second. And the Global Silence. I don't think Water's going to be getting out of this one. Is there anything Jakiro can do? The actually, he's doing okay until that last right click. But in comes me. He's going to show what he can do. They're going to try and finish off well. Leave that to the Jakiro now. They're going to split up. Meet moving forward. One right click onto Cook. That has two kills for the price of one. You get one Drow Ranger. But, you know, if we look at the fight recap, it does favor Xenex. But losing your Drow again. So she's two, two, and two. Yeah, I think they're still going to be happy with that, though. Um, they force out a global silence. That's going to be on cooldown for a little while now. Um, but potentially, I think you need that if you're going to go for a gank on the Drow Ranger, because yeah. otherwise she's going to see the Spirit Breaker come and just gust her away. And so I think it's a good combination yeah. there. Okay, charge now to Warlock. <laughs> I don't think he's going to survive this one, especially with Rhyme and Cook. The bashes are real coming in. I mean, look at this healing. Like I said, doing a lot of work here. It's just not going to be enough, though. So no TP support this time. And Rhyme, he's... So the thing is, though, so he's gone ham a couple of oh, times. Oh, and in the meantime... Meep so gets a solo kill on Crundle and the Evoker, and there's a Miss Micro actually, and they also give up the Courier, just sort of floating here in mid, not noticing it's here. Ah. Meep throws out a couple of right ki clicks, and uh, yeah. Wow. Beats the throw out the uh, 
Whose who's was it actually? That was uh. It was the Radiance. Radiance Courier. Just want to see who's uh. So, yeah, I think this is the right decision for Xenix. They've rotated the Drow range in this top lane. It's definitely a little bit safer than the bottom one. Leaving the Jakiro there to put some damage onto the tower. So, yeah, this Tusk is 0 and 3. He's, uh, he's died a fair bit. What about the Shadow Fiend? His, his last hits are right up there. But as you'd expect, considering he's farming up these jungle camps, uh, none of which have really been stacked for him because <laughs> everyone's too busy fighting, and he just wants to farm. But yeah, I, I think Ryan he he knows this hero pretty well, and he's mm. I think you have to do this. You just go run at people. You got the curse of Venus. You got the Aphotic Shield. And yeah, I would have liked to see the Uve out from him. I guess they do have one on the Spirit Breaker, but uh, I mean, you know, he's the one going to be putting in more of a right right click. But I'd like to see that him on this lane, you know, help out with that curse of Venus, but. He's still going to be fine with the phase boots. Oh, he's going for the Vlance now, yeah, Lance so. Now, so. Oh, look at me. He's got the DD. He's going to be spotted out by the creeps. So, uh, Ryan is quickly going to run himself away. In fact, he's going to turn and right click Cook, hiding in the tree line. But a really good tornado with the EMP. The Global Silence is going to be there to try and save them for now. But with four heroes rotating in to Sudley, he's got that rocket. It's a really big uh, AoE. So, he's going to drop that. Only catching out Cook, though, but they can at least turn this into a tower push. Yeah, Winner's Curse coming out from uh, Mute. He's managed to find his level 6 as well. Uh, level 7 on Jakir as well. So the supports for, uh, for the Dio, really good levels on them actually. Whereas, uh, you know, Cook and Welp only finding level 4. Yeah, we're going to take down this tower with, uh, with no real response from uh, the team. He's going to push mid. And I don't think he can with that fire goal and being up. There's just early game, there's no way to fight into it. Yeah, and I mean, this tower, probably one of the least important towers in the game. Um, if, not the, uh, least if not the important tower in the game. game. Yeah, probably, you know, if, compare it to the, uh, the offlane tower of a Dyer, it's right next to Russia, and this tower is miles away. Uh, Meep gets silenced there, however, the charge onto Ichiko. Cook manages, does get stunned up there, and look at the dukes around the tree line. Negative earn on him, he needs that one right click, he's just not gonna find it. Oh, he was trying so hard and actually winding up for it as the draw range got the kill on him, so it was actually lucky the TP came in when it did. Yeah. Oh, right. <laughs> nice. Um, one thing about running was aggressive try lane um, for the, the dire side is, but you know, because draw range is here, but needs other heroes in lane to stand still, he's only actually going to be level 6 to 12 minutes. I mean, science is level 8 already, you know, on mid comes level 11. Uh, Rhyme is uh, level. Nine, Voke is level 11 as well, and so Pseudo's level 8, so. I do think the Drought Ranger, though, is a hero that is item dependent more than level dependent, because once you do get that level 6, you get all the bonus um, agility, and it's more, you have to build things like as Cook has gone on, the MP is going to go down there as well, the negative earn charge, Cold Snap's keeping him there. One more right click, and Meep does take him down. Snowball's coming through, though, onto me, the Silence is going to be there as well, Ice Path and the Ice Shards keeping Meep in. Is there a, a Wall response, wall response, not skilled there, and the liquid fire just killing off. So, three for me actually surviving there. Yeah. Wow. Another, another, another great engagement from. Uh, and the ice path Bennett. doing so much yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah, this Shakiro doing. Uh, yeah, you normally see like two, two zero and nine. This yeah. is currently. So uh, yeah, he's. And every time the ice shards come out from the tusk, mm. the the ice path is instantly there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, normally you'd see. Uh, with a stud, maybe like Ice Strike Array, you'd have the chance to get the Ice Shards and always punch off, but like you say, with how, with how the Ice Path works, so when you move into it, it instantly stuns, you can wipe that down, as soon as they come up, they're going to be stunned and they've got to turn around. Uh, so yeah, really really good pick, I think, up against the, uh, up against the Tusk. And, uh, and Spirit Breaker as well, I'd say. It's very easy yeah, to yeah. stun him up. You just put it in yeah. the way, and he's, he's either got to stop or he gets stunned. And just to note, 13 minutes in, I don't think Beez is going to get up to that 130. Mm. I, don't, I don't think he's breaking his own personal record yet. No, unfortunately not. He is, uh, he's going to finish up that drum. He wants to get some early stats in. Um, you know what, Kundra, up to, up to 2.7, nearly 7k gold. I think he's just kind of deciding what he wants to build. Yeah. Do you think he builds into the mech, or is that for another hero to build into? I think in a game like this, where, where Beast is not getting much farm when he's going for the drum, he needs to be that sort of big carry as we see a rock on bottom. Yeah, Ryan taking a lot of right clicks here. He's already got that bar of time. And Kundral, though, comes in, uses that Requiem, but it's not going to be enough to keep anyone back. Doesn't get a kill, and then we do see Meep getting a double kill there, finishing off Abaddon. 
And they can, once again, they drop the rock, not close to the tower, but they can just use it to get the kills, then move forward, and it does decent damage to towers. And this tower's already down to 248 hit points, so they don't even need it. So, two towers down on the side of the Radiant. The top and the bottom. Middle will probably be the next objective. Probably one of the harder ones to get. They might have to wait until the rock again. So, Yules for the Invoker. He can still, uh, you can use that to, um, it's, it's, I think Yules is a great item against yeah. the Abaddon. He goes borrow time, it's like, up in the air you go. Yeah. And yeah. then doesn't get hit. Yeah, doesn't great, I mean, it's a task. You get snowballed, you can use yourself to avoid the damage. You know, you can sort of spirit break a charge. And yeah. like we were saying before, you can dispel the silence itself. So, yeah, probably the best item choice you can go for here. Um, he needs two. That's what he needs. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Roshan uh, can go down for uh, the Xenex as well. See the Jow, uh, the Jow Precision Aura with uh, five range units, like we're talking about. The Liquid Fire slows up at attack speed, and um, not actually any points in. Uh, we'll probably see a point in that sort. Get taken out. No, okay, he maxes double X first. Uh. Meep still only has those, uh, those sort of four spells to work with right now. And, uh, make but I think at the moment that's all he needs. He does need the Tornado EMP when the Spirit yep. Breaker comes in and the Cold Snap there to deal with it as well. And you're not really seeing it. The, the fighting is five right now, so the Sun Strike isn't really needed. The Meteor comes in time um, and playing it really, really well because the bonus damage from the, the draw means the Exhort doesn't really need to be rushed on. Right. One thing we are going to see when the, uh, when the point that comes out is that, uh, that max attack speed wet. Yeah. So, uh, you know, he can shove that onto the Jow or himself with Jow Aura, so really buff up that damage. The nice shot's coming out from, well, uh, maybe he's gonna back off. Can the Radiant even fight this? They do have the global up. The Spirit Break is not even level 6 yet. And look at Wyvern hiding in the side lanes. They get the Winter's Curse onto the Silence, so they're gonna burn all his mana. Very quickly, the Global comes in and saves him, actually. So Global Silence does come out for now. self yules cancelling the uh, Silence there, and the Tornado coming through. Silence are already dead, and the Ice Path catching up too. Kundra will be looking to get that Requiem. It's gonna be huge. That's huge. Take it down, four heroes. He's gonna try and turn and fight now, but the Cold Embrace keeping up Meep for now. He's gonna try and run himself away. Kundra trying to... He's got the raises now up off cooldown in a couple of seconds. He throws them out. New 242 going down. This was a massive Requiem. Four dead and where is the invo uh, the invoke is dead as well and that's going to be ages popped on trial ranger they should finish this girl off pretty quickly she's not going to get away he does have the silence to gush push people back and control no the right clicks aren't there because she's too close to enemy heroes and damn that requiem guys <laughs> catching out four heroes very next to him yeah hundred decides <laughs> off with a shadow blade he, he plays smart he doesn't reveal it before that push um they get baited in they, they winter's curse up the, the silencer but well, comes through with a snowball, they get the global off, though. That was a really nice turnaround. Um, yeah, instantly, though, you see me pick out the gem. So, that's not going to catch them out again. I think that uh, they're definitely going to be wise to that. They can still five man down these towers. They do lose the Aegis, but... I mean, if they have that fight, you know, again, with, with any knowledge that he has of Shadow Blade, that doesn't happen. So, but still, really, really good for Seems Good to get back into this game. Um, it's going to, you know, give him a, a good chunk of gold on the Negraph, about 5k gold, so... They're going to be happy with that. But now, oh yeah. they've still got the, I feel like they, you know, they might be a little bit disheartened. They're gonna, they've drawn the arrows. They're going to just go up this top lane. They do have the golem now. They didn't have that previously, and me running forward. He's going to try and find anyone he can. There's the rock. They want to blood this science as fast as possible. Saying that, he doesn't have his global, but they can do it. Easy pickings for them, and now they're chasing after Cook. He's got the charge, but he also is going to cancel that for now. They need to use the Winter's Curse. They're going to commit it. Might as well. This is going to make getting the tower fairly simple. They have that golem once again, used to get a pick off, and now they can push forward. Yeah, the move speed from the... Uh the Invoker with the Phase Boots and the Yules is just too much with a, with, with a Chasing Tower on to, uh, on to be sort of silence at only 345 move speed, even a Spirit Breaker, you know, he has an empowering pace, but he's going to be only 340 pace with only the Brown Boots speed. So. And I think this is what they need to do now, they need to move when the Global Silence is off field, Antonin is going to go on to, well, he's going to be in the Ice Path's going to be there as well, and he just goes down to the Kira. Great, great combo, you know, putting yeah. the Ice Path under the Tornadoes when they come down. I was just thinking that, like, it's like, oh. a yeah. brilliant. Yeah, and like I say, oh, well, maybe after this base push, the Ice Pass going to come through again. The Gorm's still there, right clicking down, the Apothic Shield's still going to stay on right. But the splash damage as well that comes out from right clicks, Global Silence is going to be there as well now, the Apothic Shield is going to pop. Meep in a bit of trouble, the right clicks coming down from the, the SF, Cold Embrace is going to be there, is there a raise? No, the Ice Pass is actually going to keep him alive, Fundal caught up in that, the fight comes through, and Silence is already dead, Snowball's going to come up onto Ichigo, the Wall Response is going to kill Mark Cook. Is 
the Agatha is going to go down. Yeah, the borrow time comes out now from Ryan. The right click from the, and again, this is going to be another five man team wipe. They needed to back off once that global silence came back off on cooldown. This is what, what the problem is. The group up is five when the global's off, um, and they just get caught out in team fights. So I think that's what they need to do. The group up is five when the global silence has been used, and then back off, play the defensively, maybe do a bit more farming when the global is actually available there for, for Pisa. Yeah, and that is going to be a gem going away of Seems Good as well. And Pundra finishing up a Sanjin Yasha. Abaddon finishes up a Sanjin Yasha as well with a drum and a Vlad. So, uh, yeah, really thank you, Frontline 2 cores. Um, obviously, there is a lot of damage coming out from the side of Zen X, but. Again, so the Drow Ranger, only level, only level 10, can't really put out the damages yet, and uh, his farm isn't, isn't up there as well. Uh, they do have a more like sort of an even spread of farm with this sort of five man taking over towers. With uh, well performing as well as he is. Um, when the Cold Embrace comes out, instant snowballs, instant ice shards. Do you think Invoke is going to look for something more, more along the lines of maybe that Orchid to stop that coming out? Even when the Global Silence is there, he's got that disable to stop uh, Tusk from being able to save the allies. Yeah, maybe it's something they look for. They do have the uh, they have a Gust from Jar Ranger leveled up, so they can look to that as well. well I'm just thinking when the Global Silence is yeah. there, there's actually no way to uh, deal with the Tusk. Yeah, Drow Ranger, I think I'm giving him a Sanjin Yasha, not a Manta, so... That's interesting. What do you think the reason behind that is? I think she just wants to tank up. I mean, the, the Sanjin Yasha is going to give a good amount of stats, but the Manta she doesn't do too much for a Drow Ranger. She can dispel the Silence, but she's only got that one spell to cast. I think she, she's okay with just tanking up and uh, letting her team do that. She might go back to the BKB yeah. later as well. Yeah. So that's something she could look forward to. But yeah, it looks like uh, Xenex, they, they were looking very confident at the beginning of this game, but... After a couple of failed pushes, they did get pickoffs before, but then yeah. when they didn't have their big ultimate, they didn't have this big wall of them and the chaotic offering, things went a little downhill for them. And because of it, the network is back to zero. This is anyone's game now. And yeah, I, I think this is this is now advantage uh, advantage towards way of seems good. We are going to see. Um, then actually wants to get in the top lane with a rock. So this is the uh, sort of a rock versus the global silence. Um, yeah. like the Keter of it. Keter of him versus the global silence. Uh, so a matchup when they both have it. Let's see who's going to come out on top. Meep sees that this game is going to go a bit longer than they wanted to. He goes back with a Midas, um, which I think is a smart choice. You know, this game is going to turn into a lot more of a farming game because they haven't got that, got that racks yet. They can't quite push in. So they're, they're now content to sort of farm up, knowing that they've got these sort of two big two big cores in the Abaddon and uh, Shadow Fiend on, uh, on Seems Good. Yeah, look at this Abaddon. He's got a lot of farm. Mm. He's second in net worth in the entire game. Warlock is the highest for the Dire in this situation. <laughs> yeah, Midas on, uh, on Warlock as well. So they're going to have a double Midas up. Keep their farm going. Yeah. I guess, I guess this is the point, like, Xenex, they've gone, okay, right. Right, guys, we've tried this push. It's failed a couple of times now. We've got these two Midas's. We've got a Drow and Invoker, both of which are good late game. Not, not forgetting to mention um, the Warlock as well. So. Yeah, and the Warlock didn't go straight for that Aghanim Scepter. Going instead for the Force Staff. He does pick up a Perseverance now. Wondering whether it's going to be that straight refresher. It's what we'll likely see. Um, maybe he could go into something like a Lotus Orb mode. Maybe to just dispel that silence. So, can we looking at that too? We see Invoker does get spotted out. Remember, there's the gem on uh, Welp there. And the Global Silence comes out. Yules is going to dispel that, but trapped in a very dangerous place. Throws out the Tornado, only catching one hero now. But a good sign is coming in. Well, Meep, he's getting slowed down. The Corner Brace is going to keep it there. That's a good rock catching out, too. But Ryan's still got borrowed time. He's just going to right click where possible. Ice Shards come down. He's going to hit Meep. He's trapped in. And now the Requiem, slowing people down, reducing their damage to dead. Control is, is now unstoppable, punching up into the air. And that's going to be the uh, Winter Wyvern going down as the last two die heroes are going to TP themselves out in the tree line. And I was saying uh, they were going to sit back and farm, but they looked for the fight again and it just doesn't work out for them. Yeah, and I think this is the problem running the five ranged hero strat around the draw range that you don't really have any heroes unless you run something like a Husker that can take a lot of punishment. You know, if you get caught out when the Invoker got caught out there, there was vision, so the Ghost Walk wasn't really going to do anything. Um, and they get punished for it, and they, again, give up. Another really bad team fight. Drow was just tickling Kundral. He's got a lot of armor, a decent amount of HP as well. Ooh, did you go? This is going to be a melee barracks falling in 23 minutes. And we thought it was going to be Xenex going on high ground first. Not the case in this situation. Do they look to turn uh, the silences a bit too low? Where is the silence? He's, he's going towards. He's got himself a regen rune. And Roshan, that's a shame. It will be spawning in the next 16 seconds. 
and they're not going to see that. Although saying that, it might have been a bit difficult to fight around us. The Dyer all are, are all alive now. So what do you think? Uh, uh, who's the captain of Xenex? They should go. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think he's going to be saying to his team now? Well, I say, <laughs> he's saying, go Roche, mm. we smoke. Yeah. <laughs> so that's going to be what they do. That's uh, a pretty big deal in Final Survives. Obviously, you know, Meep gets initiated on there and blown up. If he has the Aegis and survives after that, he can come back with all of his, his, uh, all of his health. They're going to see this. They're rotating it as quickly as they can. But with the medallion, they throw out the tornado. Need to finish this Roshan very quickly. They're fighting. They're going to go for this. There's an Invis onto the... Uh, on the actually, Shadow Bean is Shadow Bladed up. And now this Matus comes in. Now the EMP to town of you. The Witch is kind of trapping out four. They need to fight up if they can. Sule, he doesn't have his Golem just yet. But they are fighting around this. The Global now comes out. Only the Tusk is dead at the moment. The Aegis does go down. That was the Invoco had that. And now the right clicks come in from Control. It's going to be uh, an Ice Path. He's dropping out three heroes. Drow Rain doesn't is probably in a tricky situation here but if they can get control this could be worth it he was disarmed it looked like by the deafening blast but the right clicks come in they're sitting right on top of him Ichigo goes down now as well the winter wipe and up on the high ground the four stuff it's a five man wipe uh, 24 to 26 in now and the radiant even though they didn't get Roshan they took down the ages carry it make and go look high ground now on the bottom lane it looks like as the lane pushes in you can hear them now seems good they are hyped they are ready to win this game yeah, and seems good. They knew who to target there. Like you say, the uh, the the fire golem was down, but I don't know if seems good knew that or not. So as soon as the dragonite dies, uh, dies, they move on to the warlock. They knew exactly who to target. The invoker goes down first. They move on, do a lot of damage, come back, finish him off, because he was separated from his team in the river. Once he comes back with the AGS, everyone else on Xanax has taken a whole load of damage. So there was, I don't think there was any way for them to really pull that fight off. And like I say. If you're gonna run this drow strat, you need to finish. You need to finish by this time because you just take a whole load of punishment. If not, and your heroes can't stand up to it, and you're actually gonna go down. And the call embrace is there to keep him up for now. But the right clicks from the shadow fiend, I think that was a three right clicks, and it was down to about a quarter of his health. Yeah, they're so gonna be off the mark just from uh, yeah, like you say, when when there's you know heroes up in the face of a drow ranger, they really just don't have the damage to finish with his heroes. You know, you saw you saw. The Drow Ranger on full HP, 100 on about. <laughs> the fake back is going to work now, and that's a punch up into the air. Winter's Curse, not going to be available as Winter Wyvern is down and Ichigo himself. He's going to yule himself up into the air, but he's probably going to go down here anyway. Are they going to look for more? They do chase him all the way back into the, their base, the Dire, huddling by the fountain. And here are the T4s, they're in jeopardy as the fortification comes out, but it's only going to stall them for a short amount of time. Buy back from Ichigo, but they're still without a Winter's Curse. Global Silence is, Jachi just comes up now. Rhyme chasing after who he can, and there's the Global Silence. It's actually not going to affect the, actually does affect the Evoker in the end. He's silenced up, and now the right clicks. They're fountain farming. What is this? This is dangerous though. Sudley, he gets the stun off, and the Golem is going to go down. Also the slows as well, slowing down Rhyme, but remember, he's still got that uh, borrowed time and godlike streak now for Kundral. He shadow bladed up, turns up right click up against the Meep. Who's going to be there to save him? No one's there. And now look at this. He's just right clicking like a madman. The Eagle Song as well. And Meep buys back. He's going to turn and show him what right clicks are made of. Just not going to help though. Rhyme. He's still got that borrowed time. No manner of speaking though. But Kundral gets the raises and the right click. Triple kill for him. If he can get a couple more, this could be the rampage we were looking for. Not going to happen. It's GG is called. And it looks like seems good. They're going to take this second game. And yeah. it's going to bring the whole series to 2 1 in favor of Seems Good because they had a one game advantage going into this up. Final. Yeah, that was turned out we beat, you know, uh, next to uh, our head in the end of the game, but another good high ground event for Seems Good. They, they turn around the fact. You know, something different for both teams in this game as well. Something we've never like really seen, really you know, is a silencer in the safe lane for Seems Good. Not a typical beast of hero, you'd say, but uh, the aggressive tri in the Drow from. Um, from Xenex and doing a throwback with that Warlock strat unfortunately doesn't work out for them. Uh, again, like I say, they don't really have that hero on the front line to take this punishment. And uh, yeah, Kundra with a Shadow Blade, that's going to be the big turning point at the, oh, uh, yes. the mid tier two. I think uh, that was it. That was when the game mm -hmm. went way in the favor yeah. of Seems Good. Uh, you can say that Abaddon was playing the carry there. Um, and the, the, the silencer, though, was more of a utility hero throwing out that global silence when it was needed, throwing out the, the curse, the last word, you know. And it was more, I'm going to sit in the back and I'm going to let the Abaddon go in forward, yeah. I'm going to let the Spirit Breaker go forward. They're going to pick up the heroes. And these are at an easy game. Mm. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, yeah, I feel like the Xenex, they just 
they tried pushing high ground one too, mm. one too many times. Like I say, with that strat, you need to be finishing by the 25 minute mark. It is an early game strat because once the, the Spirit Breaker gets big, once the Abaddon gets big, and he is in Draw Ranger's face, as soon as you get up close to the Draw Ranger, he loses all of that bonus agility. So all the bonus damage coming out for all five heroes instantly drops down. There's no way to deal with that. You know, unless he gets something like a Shadow Blade or he gets a Blink Dagger so he can blink away before he does actually get engaged on and get a better position. But for now, for you know, once that happens, once you get something like the Spirit Breaker coming in, getting the actual attacks on, then the Drow's just dead. Yeah. And uh, so, see we got only a 2 one up in this series. Yeah, they, so, if they uh, win the next game, they win themselves. They win themselves uh, 2,500 pounds in this yeah. 5,000 pound prize pool. Okay, so it uh, looks like we're going to be uh, heading into the next game fairly shortly. We're going to take a short break now. So don't go anywhere as game number, I guess name game number four will be coming up. See you in a bit. Tiny just showed himself going down the stairs there into the river and Mew on the high ground is going to see that coming out. So they know they can probably get a backstab there if they want to kind of pincer him in there. But everyone else just walks away. You know, leave Rhyme, he can deal with it. He knows what he's doing. All right, Sudol, let's get a nice skewer up onto the high ground. He might look to... Nah, is he going to risk it? Is he going to do it? He, I think he is. He's looking for it. He's got the skewer level. He's going to do it. He, he doesn't quite get Doom up on the high ground. This could be costly as well, actually. He just makes the run away. Didn't quite choose to move it for, far away enough, and it was actually Doom that ends up picking up the bounty rune. But Razor gets the one on the bottom lane. This means Shadow Fiend is going to be down half a level, moving in, and uh, 100 gold. So yeah, pretty, uh, that's pretty interesting. That's uh, Skewer. He was going for it, but it's not going to happen. And look, this is what Razor can do. He's pretty tanky. He's got the boots up against the Shadow Fiend. He's not actually going to be able to get in range for a decent static link. Now he's going to go for it. And he's going to go against the Condor and right click him. Just sitting up on this high ground, it's. It feels really obnoxious when you're playing up against it, and there's nothing you can do. However, the crit wave is going to go underneath the tower. But yeah. with 21 extra damage, you can go for the nice. And it forces Kundal to go for those raises at level 1, where usually you want to go for you know the bonus damage when you're getting the creep support, but you're just not going to get it when the static one comes out. Kundal is going to hit those, uh, those two cubes under the tower against me. He's going to throw out the smiley. So, Did he actually uh, manage it? He was yeah, like he managed 20 to get damage. 21 damage, he managed to get those two cubes under the tower. So he is 4 0. Going to begin to meet also 4 0. So. Uh, yeah, good play from Kundal there, obviously. Yeah. He's played Shadow Fiend a lot. He's probably played this matchup a billion times, so... Yeah, he knows the capabilities of his own. Ray's missed there, so I've just, <laughs> yeah. uh, just raised him, but... A caster's Curse. Yeah, Caster's Curse. He's uh, going to mention that one to him later. Yeah, so it's going to be a, a tiny Lich duel off lane. And like we've said before, the sacrifice is instrumental in keeping the Creek Wave underneath the Dyer's Tower, although Paul's looks like they have come out from the Radiant side. So yeah, I'll be interested to see how this Slada support in the support position pays off. Oh, they're looking desperately for this Observer Ward. Eating a tree. Oh, it just needs to eat one more. It is there. But they decide they need to go back and zone out these uh, dual offlane heroes. And Magnus himself, he's up at seven last hits. It's more than the jug and, uh, more than the Doom at the moment. Mm. Slightly uncharacteristic, I would say, for uh, Bisa here. Meat getting turned around on mid, he's gonna go down. Oh, no. Interesting. Tries to tries to commit, I think, onto Kundra. But the bottle charges up and uh, he finds the raid. Yeah, 112 damage stolen from the Saturday Link. Wow. Think, uh, he tries to dive mid, but gets hit by a couple of raises in the tower. And, uh, first blood, guys. First blood. TP comes in now. I don't know where, but somehow Narvada's got nine last hits. Was she, oh, she must have been in the top lane while. Uh, the Doom was in the jungle getting a cream. Mm. Hence why, okay, yeah, it's, it's a bit unfair for me to call that out without actually being fully informed about what's going on. So, of course, his last hits are going to improve now. He's come out of the jungle without that creep. But the extra advantage that uh, Meep had because he had the bounty rune is not there anymore because Shadow Fiend is level 4, whereas Meep's only level 3. Yeah, the bottom, this uh, split tiny dual lane. We just give him a bit of farm. The Jug is still going to have a good creep score. Tiny is picking up though. Um, we don't see the Frost Blast coming out yet for uh, Lich. She's going to go for that Ice Armor. That uh, is 30% slow whenever, and that's 20% attack slow whenever they get they hit. So up against the Slardar and the uh, Juggernaut, that's going to obviously be very good. That's over now, stop the, uh, stop the attack to reduce your damage. And Sudley up at 15 last hits. He's the man on this mag. Yeah. He's having a great time with something. I need him to teach me, some, teach me his moves. 
But again, I do think it's down to me being able to be so aggressive onto the Shadow Fiend. Okay, he did die when he dove the tower, but it's more, it forces the Nagasaran then to try and protect Kundral. So it means that Tsudalos, he's only going up against the Doom. Um, so with that Shockwave, with the Skewer, he's never really going to be in too much trouble and he is going to be able to farm himself up to a decent amount actually at the top of the last hits right now. Kundral starting to uh, get some extra damage, 22 souls. A lot of extra damage, nearly hitting 100 damage. As, uh, if you say Ichiko, this is what the Slala can do. Look, he's just sprinting after Kondral now. And with Meep in tow, they should maybe find us in the Magnus. Goes down. He actually misses the skewer back. Oh, it's very close. Uh, very unfortunate there for Sule. Just missing that skewer and meaning the, the Doom, I mean, the Shadow Fiend does a little sidestep and gets himself away from the oncoming stun of the Slithering Crush. That little fishy is pretty scary. Who's actually gonna move towards the jungle as well for now? Keeping up that bot lane where there's the uh, pretty shiny, already realizing that that's not a place he really wants to be. And mid uh, meat goes down again. Oh, he does. Completely missed that. In the bottom lane. Oh, Winter Wyvern. He's falling as well, and seems to got a 3 0 up. Just after five minutes into this game, they put down a sentry as well. Yeah, and I think this is where the Winter Wyvern falls down against the tiny Lich combo. You've got the Frost Blaster, you've got the Avalanche, you've got the Toss. It's all magic damage, and that Cold Embrace isn't going to do anything. In fact, it's not even skill up yet. Because Mute knows if he puts that out, he, he's just going to get caught out in a really bad position and pretty much get bursted down. And it looks like we're switching things up a little bit. It looks like Juggernaut is going to switch off to this mid lane. And very unexpectedly, uh, unexpectedly Meep is going to head off into this uh, bottom lane. Interesting. I guess the idea behind this is Razor's uh, probably a little better against the Tiny because he is a melee hero. The static, static Link has got three points in there. It's going to be draining an awful lot of mana. And this is going to get Jug Juggernaut the mid lane. Saying that, he's only level five up against the level seven Shadow Fiend, so he might have a little bit of a harder time. Yeah, the Doom goes out with Zoodle, and he is actually going to live against that. He's going to south off, yeah, and in comes Welp. He's going to skew him back towards the tower. Welp, got to be careful. There are creeps, where creeps there to tank up some damage. And we did actually see the Doom go down to the Juggernaut as Juggernaut spins to victory there. So, big kill there on the Doom. Doom was yeah, really, expended. Really good rotation kill. from Michigan there with the, uh, the sprint and the slivering crush. And... Uh, Shadow Fiend has an invis, though. So there's, there's no way that uh, Control can be ganked for now. And look, look at these right clicks. Oh, he's going to go for the long raise. It's not going to be enough to finish yeah, him magic, off, though. The magic wand is there from... Uh, Morsen's war and he's gonna live. He's gonna have to go back to base, but uh. So, real lane switcheroo up here now, and two of these Radiant heroes up in this top lane. It's Ichigo and Meep. So much damage being drained onto uh, the Nagasar, and, and but they're gonna try and finish him off. They do. The right click has come in, and now the sprint away. Slardar looking for the reinitiation with the stun. He doesn't have mana though. He will have yeah, it now though. Sprint is he gonna get into range? This is gonna be very close. And the move speed just a little bit high. He's got the sprint. He held onto that for now. Now the stun guaranteed with Meep coming in. Extra damage as well. Don't forget about Sule. And Magnus actually steals that kill with a shockwave. That's four Radiant Heroes, but getting a couple of important kills. Doom once again falling. He's now Norton 2. Shut it. We talked about people not shut shutting uh, this guy down, and that's what they're doing this time. Omni Slash is there for Water. He says he's going to run away from the right clicks. Long Raise is there. It's going to hit onto the Juggernaut. But once again, bringing him down to about 50 hit points. Not quite enough. Mm. Yeah, Waters were actually. Uh... Fighting with dust, you saw there from the base coming back, seeing that there's the Invis rune on Kundal. Kundal is now going to use that Invis rune, but uh, he's going to wait in mid lane and see if he can bait something in. But I don't think uh, they're going to fall for it. They, they obviously know there's an Invis rune up, so um, yeah, and it's a good place by Kundal though, making sure he stays next to that creep wave. He knows the Omni Slash is there, and it's probably going to kill him with the spin if he gets yeah. close. So he just bursts. Um, the Juggernaut down and then moves away as the creep wave starts yeah, to get low. Yeah. Oh, the Requiem in the mid lane. Ichigo takes a fair bit of damage, but managed to get the stun plus the sprint. He's going to get away. In fact, Control, normally you see a 4 4 build the Necromance. Monster first, but he actually he knew he had that end of his route, so decided to level the Requiem. Only level 1, though, so didn't do too much damage to Ichigo. Plus, he didn't have sprint on, which obviously helps. I'm waiting for Magnus to use this RP. It hasn't been used just yet. Kings coming out. So scoreline now 3 all after being 3 0 in favor of SG. Yeah, well manages to deny the, uh, the regen room top with an illusion. to play there. Uh, and now Water in this bottom lane, he's he's decided to go back here. How's this Tiny doing? He's got phase boots. I guess Blink will be the next option. 
Such a good item. Oh, I'm looking towards this top lane. They're looking to go on the Doom now, but Doom, remember, does have that Scorcher. Does get it off the RP there. They do have enough stun lock to bring him down. It should be an easy kill here. They do just about get that. And actually, the gold is split in the end. But a kill's a kill. And this is now the third death for Doom. So, <laughs> But the thing is, though, like, Doom does have comeback mechanics in the form of Devour. Yeah, and all the while, uh, you know, we're focusing on the Doom, but Kundral, he's back into the you know, Dire Jungle, top of that, uh, he's got chart with 58, you know, and he's going to be going to be Ogre Club, so uh, we're probably going to see the Sand and Yasha build come out from him. Uh, maybe that he's going to rush for BKB, but I think this game they're content to farm, so I think he doesn't want to rush him out like that, he's going to pick up a Sand and Yasha, maybe the Scardi, the Butterfly, Helm with the Dom, just get tanky, stand on the front lines, and, uh, you know, let his... Uh, there's Doom Duel for any enemies, he's going to be real, real, uh, real tank for that damage. Yeah. So, Meep uh, me on the Razor, we pro are we looking at a mech here? It looks like he might go drums though, actually. He's got the Bracer. I think something, yeah, like a drums Yasha. Just for flat out race car, chase you down, keep up that static link build, you know. It, it's going to really be effective when you go in on someone like the Tiny, like the Doom. And you can just turn around and right click them down after you've taken off. Even if they're chasing you, you've still got that static link up. And after a while, they're just going to have no damage to right click you down. Yeah, Meep's farm has suffered a fair bit because he's been rotating around the lanes. So, I mean, he's got help to get a kill or two. So, hence why he's sat back in the jungle. We've got the bounty rune. So it's a bottled up bounty rune for the Shadow Beam Mal while in the bottom lane. It looks like Rhyme is, could be in some trouble, but. TP support from Cook. He's now level six, like he's level seven. So he's got that chain frost, maxing out the uh, ice armor. This yeah. is, you know, this is, uh, I think, becoming more and more common, especially against these physical damage carries. So, assuming he, uh, he does max it out and next level, like, that's going to be nine armor, which uh, almost completely counts to level one armor by damage, which is going to reduce 10 armor. So. That's yeah, the Lich, Lich pick a really smart pick up this game against all the, all the physical damage. It's basically the same armor uh, as a plank mail, which yeah. is a 1400 item plus the slow it applies yeah. as well. Yeah. So, yeah. We see Doom, like you said, does have the ice armor creep devoured as well. So that's an additional eight armor if he's gonna throw it out as well. So, you know, we're gonna see him probably move into the Vlads as well. So, yeah, the armor game from Team's Good seems to be the. Uh, Good choice. Keep uh, obviously Tiny is a really low armor hero, so uh, that's going to help him out considerably till he gets to level and uh, have the experience. Oh, they see the combos being used by Rhyme, so they're going to go on him. Oh, a slithering crush. He cancels it. If they didn't really want to go for that. Um, in fact, straight, Meep hasn't even got a level in uh, Unstable Current. I think that's a little strange going up against the likes of Doom and uh, Lich, but. I guess he, he wants uh, these two spells maxed out as early as possible. He can, it's still going to be useful later on to, uh, anyway. Some um, all chat comes out from Ryan. There's this, all the smoke in their face. I didn't realize. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure why it's on. It's to make the lights look bigger, better, guys. Anyway, Sudele, he's getting close to that blink dagger. Not going to have it quite as early as he did in the first game, but still a very reasonable time for an offlane uh, Magnus. You know, he's going to skew himself away after being netted up. So Naga Siren's level 6 now. That's only just happened. So whether they try and set something up with Song, if you can get people in like, a perfect position, get like two, three-man uh, Avalanche, couple that up with the uh, frost, uh, Chain Frost coming out from Lich, that's going to be uh, some dead heroes. Yeah, the big combo we used to see with the, uh, the Naga Siren ESF is obviously you out of sleep, um, and the Shadow Fiend winds up Requiem, cancel Requiem, and you get the full damage from the, uh, the Requiem results from Shadow Fiend. So they might look to do that, um, but with heroes such as the Juggernaut, with the, uh, you, know, can, you can spam that Blade Fury, it's going to avoid a lot of the damage. Um, I think they're going to use it more defensively once this RP or this Winter's Curse comes out with you know, the initiation from the Slada. I think it's, it's going to be a more, of a, more of a defensive tool than an offensive tool. Not to say we can't use it to do it today, but uh... Kundral, he's so... he's going for what looks to be an SMY. Mm. Um... Well, Slander's actually getting very close to that Blink Dagger. So I feel like the farm on the Radiant on for Xenix is a lot more spread out. Yeah, yeah. Across all the heroes, which, you know, it has, it, has its pros, also has its cons, but... If you get the Blink Dagger up on the Magnus and Slada, looks like it's, they're going to come out at a similar time. They can suddenly start fighting way yeah. earlier than SG can. I mean, if you look at the net worth now, 
no one's top from Xenex, but they're all grouped together. They've all got very similar net worth. So like you say, that is the farm's been spread about more, and it means they're focusing the items that they need to pick up. Blink Dagger now on the slider. It means he may stop farming and start looking for more rotations while the Blink Dagger comes up from the Magnus in the next 200 gold. You go back to farming on the Razor, go farming on the Juggernaut. Yeah, I mean, it's not like literally all he needs is a Blink Dagger, then he's a, he's a happy guy. Blink Dagger BKB is probably, especially for a position for Slada, is probably the epitome of what he needs. That's just, he, he can stop that. They so meet he himself. Uh, it's going to a bit of a strange, well, not strange, like a bit eclectic at the moment, getting up those stats, help him tank up against what well, Tiny will inevitably uh, go with the combo, the Blink. Avertos is about 1,000 magic damage, approximately, and before drum, reduction. Drums on the Juggernaut, is it just a casual bracer now on the Razor? Yeah, I think it's just to be like a casual bracer on the Razor. It's picked up a belt with strength, so probably uh, like the SF, looking towards that side in the Asher. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he picked up the other club as well, so. It's going to be the, uh, the side in the Asher on Razor as well. Alright, blink finish for Magnus. This is when the plays are going to come out. Doom, how's it? Doom's actually farmed up a drum. This is what I'm talking about. He has a catch. He's died three times. Yeah, he is second from net top net worth. And, and that's look, just the power of the devourer. Yeah. Ice armor one and ice armor two. Twenty-two armor. armor. Fifteen minutes into the game. Yeah. Omni slash is like gonna tickle him. <laughs> it's like, ooh, your samurai blade. It tickles me. Still no blink for the tiny. That'll be coming up very soon. I think we're gonna have a fight up, up the top lane. Are they gonna be able to finish him off? They do. They get a doom. The, uh, the chain frost though is gonna finish off the sued lane. Oh no. So it's not really a good. Well, it's an off lane from safe lane, I guess. It has actually a good chain. It should go running himself away. This is a haste rune on the shadow fiend halfway there. And uh, oh, the courier it just stops in mid lane. Uh, maybe, maybe it's a sacrifice so the juggernaut survives. And that means Kundal now has got that Sanj. Uh, got the Asher plus the Sanj. Should be that completed S and Y. Water spinning. Uh, Winter Wyvern does have his uh, Winter's Curse. But I guess in the end of it, actually, an RP for killing off the and your Magnus, kill off the Doom, it's a good trade for Xenex in the end. Yeah, it's going to slow down the spam, slow down the levels, and slow down the blots. It, it, anything you can do to actually slow down the Doom, because the, the faster he gets up, because it, is good. it seems like it's going to be a long game anyway, so that Doom is just going around the 30 minute mark. It's going to be extremely, extremely powerful. And I feel like this Naga Siren has been slowly farming up. Meanwhile, though, in the top lane. Yeah, really good pick off on the uh, on a Shadow Fiend. Ishigo's going to blink in with uh, Crush on the edge. Uh, while that happens, Winter Wyvern TP's in. Sudo comes in to blink Skewer back into the tower. Oh, Ryan doesn't quite get a combo. Now the Winter's Curse coming on Ishigo, throwing out the Amplified damage. Blinks forward, trying to catch out the Lich. Lich, no Chain Frost, now slowed down by the Arctic Burn. Looking to get the skewer back. I don't even know actually there's no skewer up just yet. This is just going to be a sacrifice. And three dead from Seems Good. And pressure being applied to this top lane. Yeah, these blink daggers, uh, they're making use of them. Take a couple of quick kills. Um, and hit the still tower. And you saw, yeah, the, the skewer, like you say, he was waiting for the skewer to come on cooldown. So, Sudal just body blocks. He, he blinks in front of the Lich, he just throws out his body blocks and says, you're not going to get past me. And really, really effective because some, some of the players might try and blink forward and the skew back, the skew's not a cool now, and the Lich just runs away. Couldn't make any use of that, uh, that chain. I saw him up the tower, so it takes him a little bit longer to kill it. Does work on uh, does work on the towers now, just like uh, the tree protector. Yep. Armor does. I just want to point out, like, yeah, like I was saying before that fight happened, that Naga Siren has some pretty decent bomb already. Well, Naga Siren's one of those heroes, I think it was about this time last year, again, with the Gyrocopter, Naga Siren, they were pseudo supports, but what the later, again, the later the game goes, they can transition from that support role into the carry role, and it means then you've got like a four-core lineup instead of a three-core lineup. Yeah, it looks like uh, he's going to be well uh, picking up that mech on the Naga. Yeah, he can go to Greaves as well. Mm. Oh, smoke up coming out between Magnus and the Razor. They're looking for a pick off. If they can find the Doom, I think that'll be the target. They've got to watch out though. There will be two right, going into the Chain Frost. Gotta be careful. The Doom does come out. I know RP's gonna be there. And the but in comes the Juggernaut. The Razor chasing after him, but gets slowed up. This Doom has a lot of armor, and in comes the SF, the right clicks. Doing some decent work, and this is gonna force it to go to get away. 
blinks back to his base, and in the end, Doom is forced out. But obviously, Sudele on full health, it does like 300 damage or something. Yeah, just after praising Sudele for his plays, and then he forced a, a skews the wrong way. That skews the Doom away from the Razor instead of into I mean, the he Razor. Was, he, was, uh, he was trying to go for the double RP, skew the, skew the Doom into the Lich and get them both in the RP, but yeah. it doesn't quite work out. Um, maybe Surely, though, it would have been better to pull the Doom out of position away from him. Meanwhile, the, oh, the Avalanche gets like very low. Off. And the big RP onto two on the left hand side, catches out two big calls. But here we go. Here's the Naga Siren song. The Drain uh, still takes 168 damage to, the, to re initiate. They don't have the Requiem anymore, so it looks like they're going to back off for now. They've got to watch out for the Winter's Curse, though. They can find the Doom. They do get no one dead on the Radiant side yet, and the Omni Slash bringing down the Doom, and then the uh, Chain Frost is bouncing. That's a very lucky bounce towards me. He's going to go down anyway as Ryan gets in there. It's a double kill for him, a three for one trade off, and the Radiant are running behind their base, but they toss forward control. That's the place that's going to help him win this team fight. And only Sudele alive. He did get a nice RP on the left hand side, but the Omni the, uh, it was a very quick song of the Siren preventing the uh, Omni Slash coming out. And again, show you all that stuff. Magnus got a bit greedy there. Instead of just trying to pick off the Doom, get take the kill, run away from the jungle, he did go. He forced the Doom away from the rest of Xenex, and just completely out of position there. So the Lich turned around, the Naga Siren was coming in, the Tiny was coming in, and all of a sudden the the, the fight turns on its head. And yeah, this uh, the Sogon Siren is going to be a big deal with fights like that. Once the RP comes out or the Witness Curse comes out, well, going to be looking to reset the fight. And Make sure his, uh, his teammate's going to be alive. And this Shadow Feeding is, is a beast at the moment. It's in a 10k net worth. That's about 3.5k ahead of the Juggernaut. And Roshan. This uh, little team fight. Omni Slash on cooldown. 43 seconds. Winter's Curse, 30 seconds. RP, 25. So there's no team fight for Xenex uh, to uh, use their ultimates. So Roshan should be a pretty much uh, easy kill. Look at it. This double armor as well. We've talked about this a couple of times now, but it's just it's such a big difference when team fighting and even against Roshan. Roshan, his hits slow down, really don't do too much. And the Radiant might suspect this is going on, but there's not much they can do about it. Ryan Blaking forward, they had the vision, but Ichigo runs himself away with that sprint. And the Aegis is now up on Pandrel, with the Sanjay Asha complete. 3 for 3 kick goal. Might look towards. Uh, I just want to complete the BKB and then they just go high ground. They are going to have a, a sizable gold lead here after that last team fight. So, so looks how to me, it looks to me the tier twos is going to be their, their goal with this agent. Take, take the tier two mid, tier two top, take the bottom. How does Xanax go about turning this around? I mean, we, we saw in the first game there was a good RP, it's skewer pulling the, um, the spin away from the rest of his team, but I don't think that's something that he's going to need to worry about because he's sitting at Nagasaran on the back lines and he can always song if he gets a uh, feed or four stack you know the, the doom or the the shadow feed gets four stacked into the rest of xenex um you try and fight when song's down i guess is the answer but that's quite tricky to do and song is about to be up in three seconds so yeah i think xenex needs a wave of this and power to come out with about a very unfortunate what's what does go down to the tiny combo farming is in oh. jungle I didn't even see that. Just looking at this pressure being applied mid there, they man down. Trying to get the uh, minus armor on multiple heroes, and Ryan, he goes forward. Doesn't really find anyone there. The Winter's Curse catching him out. Can they follow up here? Draining damage now, but it's a big ultimate. Really not leading to anything. Yeah, amplify damage on Doom, and he's still got 17 armor. Hmm. Nice. They thought this through. They, well, the Slada was a first phase pick, so... Yeah. They had plenty of time to decide how they're going to deal with it. And they chose wisely, it seems. The next reader have, uh, have a damage right now to deal with the, the big tanky cores in the Tiny, the Doom, and the SF with all armor. Most of the damage coming out is going to be physical, between the Razor and the Juggernaut, with the Magnus as well. So, obviously, with Slot Am damage is a big part of it. Inside. So they really need the, the Junk to farm up with the Empower and with the Battle Fury that he's going to complete soon. That's a really delayed. I know he went for the drums first, but it's a really, really delayed Battle Fury. I mean, I suppose it doesn't matter because you do have the Empower behind you there, so it's more of a fighting item than a firming item. But you still really, I thought the, the Battle Fury might have been like a 20-minute target and not a 25-minute target. 
Yeah, it's... I think if you get it pre-30 minutes, it's okay. 25, if you think you're an Ember Spirit, well, normally after going drums, BOTs will have it around 25 minutes. So 25 minutes is okay. Yeah, obviously, 20 minutes, like you said, is would be the ideal time. Um, but yeah, I think Radiant, they, they need more time yeah. to try and get into that. Well, the more time they take, the bigger the Doom's going to get, the bigger the Tiny's going to get, the bigger the Nagasaran's going to get. But they're clearly not winning fights now, so... Andrew, about 200, 300 gold from the Butterfly as well. Oh, wow. MKBs are nowhere in sight for the uh, Radiant. Yeah, this is a pretty smart build. Normally you might yeah. see a Stardy first or something, but going for that Butterfly straight away. Into this physical damage with the... I guess with the Ice Armor and the Sokomanaga Siren with the Mech. Gonna, gonna stop a lot of the damage. Yeah. Yeah, and I think we've had this pact where really the Juggernaut's the only hero. You might see a Razor go for it later on, but the Juggernaut really is the only hero. Me laughing late. <laughs> Wins uh, Wyvern just dies. Just I was like, this is suicide, but then obviously he's got the Blink Dagger as well, so he just gets the combo off and blinks himself away. And that's going to be no Winter's Curse for 30 seconds as they wait for the Wyvern to respawn. We know Xenex are good at defending high ground, but are they this good? They have a bunch of, bunch of melee heroes, not the ideal sort of heroes to defend high ground. Naga Lucian, it's been a bit of a pain in the ass. Tower down to 787 hit points, that's halfway there. As they got to stall at least another 10 seconds. Where is this RP going to come from? They get the stun onto the Doom, but yes, straight away. They actually force out the Song of the Siren. They're going to try and get themselves back. But Ryan, focusing on the Juggernaut. Remember, Juggernaut does have this spin. Now, the, they, they missed the combo. The Requiem was let out just a little bit too early, or the Naga Siren song was a little bit too late. And there's a double crush. Where's the RP? They need this. They skewer them forward. Three-man RP. He's got to go for it. They go for it in the end, but they're grouping up, though. Cook, Cook gets a good Ice Blast. It's flying around the place. Actually, it's uh, Chain Frost even, but there's the Doom on to me, slowing down this uh, Doom because of the unstable current, and it looks like they're going to force a buyback. The Aegis is going to go down on the Shadow Fiend and Dyer pushing themselves back, the smoke out from the Radiant. They want to push, but they're all a bit low, no RP, no ultimates really. There is a little bit of time left on this Static Storm, but it's going to wear out by the time they find them. They're still running forward. They want to get the Blink if they can, the Blink Crush. They're fighting 4v3 at the moment. They can see the Doom. They're going to blink on forward. They do get the crush, but it's only on the Cook. And now the level death. They're going to run themselves back. But there's the skewer catching two people. If they can get this kill, Cook still alive. But there's just lots of armor. Control still on full health. This is a fight maybe that the Radiant did not want to do. And that's going to be a double kill going the way of uh, Beaster there. And there was, after a couple of... How many buybacks was that in the end? Uh, it was only one, I believe. Only only two on the Magnus. He's going to have 50 seconds. Uh, unfortunately, they don't quite manage to pull off the Red Green combo with uh, Naga Siren Sleep, but they're still going to win the fight, they're just too tanky. Starlight's going to buy back as well. Yeah, this is... Uh, I mean, the, the Razor could buy back, but... I think they're just going to say, okay, we haven't lost any buildings on the high ground. Yeah. Yeah, it was only the Shadow Fiend really... No, he wasn't... He was about half committed to pushing that lane, and he, as soon as the Juggernaut came forward, he just backs off, so... I don't think the Razor would have had that buyback baited out anyway. So they force out a couple of buybacks, but they keep their high ground alive. That's the important part. We've seen what they can do yeah. with this, and I'm sure delay, uh, delay, delay. could remember this from the first game. It's different this time. This time we don't have the Invoker. We've all the good high ground spells. They do have the Winter Wyvern. Uh, they do have the Ant Damage they can throw out, and they do have uh, Magnus still. Yeah, it was actually a really good combo. The Winter, Winter Curse came out. Magnus was in there, he got the skewer off, but he didn't RP right until the Winter's Curse had worn off. So, you know, they've got the timers down there, they know that it's going to be slightly useless if they RP as soon as that Winter's Curse comes out, because you want the attack damage onto the Winter's Curse here, or Slurder being right click down, no. The number 5 damage comes out onto an illusion, and it's actually the Shadow Fiend that gets the last right click onto Kondral. <laughs> oh, look, he's trying to, he wants to farm the stack quickly. Not going to happen though, this. Okay, cool, get the boss off. Spin makes you magic immune. Like, looks like CMG are going to group up in the top lane again. And Visa. So yeah, I mean, more, ar more, more, more armor for Doom. More armor for Doom. Why not? <laughs> it's a shame you can't get a cleave from get the cleave from Visa. He'll be hitting pretty hard. Well, to be fair though, putting um, the empower on him only it's only the base stat. Yeah. It's attack damage, so the damage you drain doesn't really add to the uh, bonus damage you get, the extra 
Is it 50% at the moment? No, it's only going to be 40%, but when Magnus hits level 14. He's still searching for that full staff for the extra long range initiation. Roshan could be up in the next few seconds. I'm sure this will be a target SG will be looking for before they go on the high ground push. He's keeping the lanes pushed out. Okay, it's going to be a long respawn of two and a half minutes out of the possible three. This, this will probably favor the Radiant and allow them to push the lanes out. Maybe get in position to contest, possibly. And we see Rhyme. He went for that Shadow Bleed. We've seen it already. And he had a sentry down. I thought his senses were tingling, but he had eyes. <coughs> so... A well with a gem is now a siren. The illusions do get the true sight. We saw him there de warding uh, yeah. that sentry with the uh, with one of his illusions. Full AC for Doom already. They shut him down so well, yet he's still so high up in the network. What's your note? He's on 41 armor. <laughs> and the who's who's going to kill him? I was going to say, with Invoker being banned out and you know, not being able to pick it up, where does the damage come from? You know, because they, they, it would be magic damage that they'd be relying on to try and put output while that armor's up, while the two frost armors are up. Dagon. And Dagon's? Five man <laughs> Dagon's. <laughs> Everyone by Dagon. Yeah. Oh. It's not real smoke. <laughs> um, so yeah, this, this is looking pretty tricky. I think you could... Like, Yules would purge off a lot of the... Uh, like the ice armor. So whether you get a Yules and put would that on the or would or blade on the uh, sort of Juggernaut? Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I think that would be. I mean, there's not anyone that really picks up a Yules. Yeah. Apart from, I like going Yules on Razor because then he static link them and the Yules <laughs> them up in the air. <laughs> but anyway, I think I think Diffusal Blade would be legitimately quite a good item here, just to purge off all those ice yeah. armors coming from both the the Lich and also that Frost Ogre Mage. What are we going to look towards? Wait, it's 2.6k gold right now. Maybe he wants to look straight towards the MKB. On the dragon. Cap. Cap. Uh, <coughs> that butterfly. Yeah, definitely uh, could be a good option. Increases damage. True strike is always pretty handy against the butterfly. Yeah, but they're, they're doing what they did in the first game, which I think is they're, they're trying to split push where possible, yeah. and they make good use of the map. This time they do have to watch out for this Shadow Blade Tiny, who's currently farming up their own jungle. Meep yeah. Ryan's gonna finish up the Agony as well. Yeah. Oh man. I like that Meep, he understands that you can Static Link illusions and steal their damage. Yeah, the Doom is gonna be thrown out onto Dragon Hall. Was that jungle? Maybe I think Beats of Four. Maybe there was a theme with him. He was about to get a shade on when it's got Omni Slash coming out. But. Yeah, well that's it. He's on his own. The Omni Slash is level two now. A decent amount of damage. Okay, Doom does have that, that armor. The physical damage won't be enough. But if there is someone behind him, yeah. like the, the Razor, like the Slider, the Amplified damage comes out. The Crush comes out. Even the Winter's Curse, if it's there to lock him down. So good walk away there from Doom. Yeah. So it looks like the They're pushing down this mid lane now. The Radiant, they want to try and maybe get an objective in the top lane, but this lane pushed him very quickly. And because Tiny has the Aghanims, he hits very hard onto the tower, especially as he can throw creeps at it as well. Fortification comes out to sort of prepare a defense of the Radiant. There's the Witch's Curse if they need to use it, but they're committing into an Aegis that is on control, and he's hitting very hard. He's got the mini crit now. <laughs> Speaking of crits, Water takes the damage. Thinking, I'll put, thinking about putting the healing ward down, but he doesn't do it at the moment. So tower already down to half health. Some uh, fortificate uh, amplified damage. They use the four stuff once again. Control. Still, uh, still one tanky guy. Link forward from Ichigo. Trying to do what they can. They can't even finish off this Alpha Wolf with 1,400 hit points because the Helm of the Dominator. And you're 100%. There's no point focusing the control in these fights. I think Doom is down for eight seconds. So maybe that's what they're waiting for before they like fully commit up to this high ground. Creep wave completely cleared away. Another blink forward. Catch out control. If they can get burn his ages very quickly before them getting too many objectives, the blink forward, they're going to actually toss control away. That was an interesting choice to maybe try and save him. Ichigo taking a lot of damage because he was sprinted up and the right clicks coming in. Control still only half health. 
challenging the Requiem. A possibility here. Sudo's looking for the target, but Melibax is going to go down without any sort of defense. They might try and look. They're going to go for the Omni Slash, but no! He gets stunned up there. Oh, and then the Omni Slash, it does kind of come through, but the right clicks is just too much to do. Also onto Meep. This is already the Juggernaut dead. Forced to buy back, and the right clicks come onto Meep. If that's a crit, he's dead. But he's going to go back to base. Not in time. He doesn't even have mana for buybacks. They have the RP. They might try and skew him into the base. They do! It's going to be the Aegis going down, and then there's the Winter's Curse as well. If they can kill off the Shadow King, they might be in for a hope. They are going to come and do it, but he gets BKB. Uh, not BKB, he blinks out just in time. So it's not going to be in the base, and don't forget about this defensive song. Two sets of racks dead, and GG is called. Yeah. We have new winners. It's going to be seems good. Can they go three for again? one. Yeah. All talking about a really cute play there from Kundra. He gets skewed into the base, Aegis goes down, buys the Blink Dagger in the base, puts it in the different room, he comes up. Blinks out and whelps out the song as well. Yeah, really great game. Yeah. Seems good. Yeah, you know, I don't think the surprise now is Saren coming up. Like you say, that song was just. Uh, I think Kundal uh, still goes down though. Even though we didn't get out of the fountain, he still goes down with the Naga Saren with the song, and that's it. Xenex completely disheartened. Can't even get the gank on the Kundal. And he's saying, no, that's it. That is game. Seems good. They knew what they were doing with that armor strap. Really well done. Yeah, and we've like I say we have seen it a few times. So once the the doom and the, the Lich come out, really what's your answer? Yeah. yeah. I think you need to build into magical damage, which they just didn't do. They picked up the Slider, they picked up the Juggernaut, you know, they, they picked up the, the, the Magnus, the Razor. It's all right-click damage that comes out from the, the Shockwave and the Skewer. There is a bit of magic damage there, but mainly, what, what did they do? Yeah, banning, banning out the Invoker yeah. first was, that was uh, the big, yeah. definitely, big definitely a, a good choice from, from Seems Good, you know. Meep died a couple of times with Razor, maybe not as comfortable on that hero was... Uh, as you would like to think. Uh, yeah, the Invoker, we saw the high ground defense in game one. Similar sort of draft from, uh, from ZX, but this time seems good. They've got their number, they uh, Big smiles they on their face. Yeah. I'm pretty sure if we can make it happen, Condrell did promise us a, win a winner's interview. So uh, They might be getting it down on the stage, I'm sure. But uh, I think it's been a great series of mm. Dota. Let's talk about this whole tournament now. Yeah. It's UK Dota well, that's some, at that's its some best. brilliant games. Um, What's uh, a couple of standouts for me were uh, WoW Gaming against the uh, first big AM, which you two casted on the first day. Okay, we can go straight to the stage for the awards. Stage awards semi, okay. Yeah, I'd like to say, say thank you guys. Great time casting, Zambrella, yeah. Robin Roll, and Faldo Lales. Quickly, before we get to the awards, I want to give a big shout out to everyone behind the scenes you're not seeing. Um, Soup Sarah and Jack for admining, uh, Jesse and Charlie, the esports guys, uh, everyone of the production here. Uh, yeah, go follow them. Ziggy, oh, backstage for doing the casting, yeah. helped us out a lot. Um, and big shout out to Emerge as well, yeah. the sponsor of the tournament. So I think we're going to throw it to the, yeah. the awards now. So have a good Christmas, and we'll yeah. throw you down to the stage for an interview. Thank you very much, guys. Great finals there. Congratulations to SG, who take home the lion's share of the money here in the Dota 2 by Emerge at Insomnia 56. But well done to them and all the rest of the teams that, of course, have made the tournament a fantastic success all weekend long. I'm going to see which one of these poor players are going to be the scapegoat that I'm going to go ahead and pickpocket on stage. Have you got a designated spokesman for today? It, yeah. yeah, let's go for it. Come on, mate. Come on now. First of all, congratulations. Really cool final. Three to one. You guys have now brought home the money. Was this a position that you were expecting to be in all weekend, or was it a bit tougher than you originally imagined? Uh, we lost games that we didn't want to lose in the upper bracket final, I think. And also, game two of, well, game one of this series was a bit off. Um, generally, I think it went about as I'd expected it to, or at least hoped. So. And w talk me through this series in particular. Obviously, game one, a little bit off for you guys, but you really did start a bit of a steamroller after that. Was there a change in mentality of the way you guys played? How did you react to allow you to really clinch the series the way you did? Well, the first game, basically, we had a chance to win the game, and then we just screwed up a base, um, base siege. And then second game, I just decided I would kill everyone as a bad one for some reason, and that just worked out. <laughs> and then that game... The lanes were just, it was over from the laning stage pretty much. So it was more, it wasn't really like a change of thought or anything. It was just being more careful about laning and drafting or whatever. Just thinking a bit more. And what are your plans for the team moving forward? Uh, obviously, you guys want to be able to come back and defend your title at the next I series. That much is a given. But is there something else that you guys are working towards? Are there other tournaments that you guys are now plugging away at focusing on? What's the next milestone for you as a team? 
I don't think there really is a next milestone, really. It was more like I-56 is like kind of fun. We all wanted to go, and we were like, oh, we can play the tournament, and we'll probably win. I think most of us are just going to end up playing Civ, so. Fair enough. Shots fired. And to be fair, guys, they've won the thing, so they're allowed to say stuff like that. That's okay. Well, congratulations once again. How are you guys spending all the money? Is it all going on a bar tab tonight? I know one person's just buying a PC, and uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Might just live. Living is good. Um, other than that, I don't know. A few people might go and have a few drinks. All right. Well, congratulations to you and the team. Great finals. Deserved victory. Ladies and gentlemen, SG. Thanks a lot, man. Well done. So that's going to be it for Dota 2 here at the eSports stage at Insomnia 56. Go and grab yourselves some lunch and a drink, because when we come back a little bit later on, seats are going to be filling up pretty quickly. Next up on the eSports stage, it's CSGO. We'll see you there.